listening and you got a ton of great information. Um, but what I will say is, it's people that sit on this board, and I'm speaking of Trustee Gonzalez that just spoke, and said nothing or did nothing when Frank Zuccarelli was the supervisor. They asked not one question, they did not one thing. <laughs> it was not fine it was not fine welcome everybody i'm excited i hope you're excited for another live stream here channel's name is hannibal is hungry my name is hannibal i'm actually named hannibal in case you guys were wondering uh, my father named me not from the movie uh from something else maybe we'll talk about that in another video but let's let's move on man the last uh 48 hours have been crazy. So much information. I tell you, it is, it is, wait, oh, look at this. Look at this person here with the most amazing interruption ever. Dude, I really, truly appreciate it. Everyone, please subscribe to the Real Late Night Crew. I was laughing uh, with your video this morning when I checked it out. Um, I have some of your video. We'll be talking about that in this uh, stream, but I really appreciate you. Uh, Shay is amazing, extremely talented. He's funny. And the dude went to Dalton, went to this uh, township meeting that we're going to be talking about and had a big problem. And you can tell that she had a problem with him more than seemed like anyone else. So we're going to be talking about that in the goons that support Hanyard. If you guys checked out that township meeting, you saw a few that were there. And we're gonna talk about someone who wasn't there that's in the uh, Dalton regular meetings, the regular board meetings. We were talking about that as well, but much love, much appreciation to you. Um, the, oh, another late night crew, uh, the Knopper. I hope I pronounced that right. Appreciate you for the dollar super chat. Much love, uh, much love. Alan, A, thank you very much with the 199 super chat. Uh, Lakeem with $2, super you guys are amazing. Man, like I'm just getting, I'm getting overwhelmed with so much love and appreciation here. Let me before we even start. Sorry, guys, I'm going to have to take some time to just show love to everyone. So, like Akeem, appreciate you. Uh, five dollar with the Chad, uh, Chad five dollar super chat. Appreciate you. Uh, Key, what uh, Key? Oh, Kansas City. Uh, Key S. Wills, Long Island. You know, I'm I'm flustered right now. <laughs> Late night crew with ten dollars. Appreciate you, uh, Kaylee. $10 super chat. Appreciate you. And a member, Lakeem. Appreciate jumping in. And the, oh man, dude, you guys are crazy. <laughs> so much love and appreciation. Thank you very much. I think, you know, we have done a lot together. Um, and we still have a lot of work to do. But the meeting, I swear the meeting was like watching Avengers. Now I know I don't watch a lot of Marvel movies anymore because they're not that interesting. But that meeting was like a damn near Infinity War or like Endgame. All the the content creators came in, the residents came in. You know, uh, shout out to Stephanie Wiedemann. She was the MVP by being a moderator and letting people express themselves. Thanos, Tiffany, she could not stop it. She was uncomfortable the entire time. I never saw her look so off. She did. She, it was a big difference between the regular board meetings when she's running the show and Lacey is trying to be the Nazi clap. You know, hey, you, you clap. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You can't. You can't be here uh, clapping. She lost all control, and you saw what happens when she doesn't have control. Now she still brought that chaotic element to her, but it was a big difference between how she behaved. At this township meeting compared to the regular board meetings in Dalton. Uh, let me finish up. Uh, Tanya with a ten dollars super chat. Appreciate you, Long Island crew. Please subscribe to the Late Night Crew. I'm gonna put the link in when I get a chance to. Uh, Jeffrey with two dollars super chat. Appreciate you, and one more from Lakeem. So much love and so much appreciation. So I'm going to we're gonna break down a little bit of of the meeting because. The meaning will translate to some of these goons and their past. And you would notice that just like I'm sure your parents 
told you or your friends tell you, be careful or who you associate with because who you associate with kind of, it says a lot about you. You know, your parents would say, don't hang out with, you know, so-and-so and them boys. Uh, don't, don't hang out with these girls over here. They're nothing but trouble. It's a reason why, because usually friend groups kind of have a similar um, value set, things that we find important. If you love video games, you're going to hang out with people who play video games. You love sports, you love basketball, you're going to hang out with people who, who love basketball. But if you are involved in a lot of shady bullshit, you, it's possible you're going to hang out in that crew. And then even if you don't do that, maybe this, you're not that kind of person, there will be a time where you need to break away from that group if they're doing something that goes against your beliefs, that go against your, your values. But if it doesn't, you just continue on with the, the, the move, basically, right? So um, let me, I think I have one, a few more before we get into it. The Critical Smoker, thank you very much for the membership. Appreciate that. Gifted membership. Much love. Uh, Leslie B for $3 Super Chat. So much appreciation. Thank you. Thank you very much. So let's, if you're not, let's, let's finish up a little bit of this. Uh, th I love the booing. I'm sorry. It was like, it's so long overdue. She was, had so much control in these meetings and Stephanie Wiedemann shut all of that down and she couldn't just ramble on without any kind of repercussions. No one can say anything. Cause again, if, if this was the, the regular board meeting um, in Dalton, as soon as someone would have clapped and said, get out or boo, they would have kicked that person out. Or just shut down the, the meeting completely. But she couldn't do this here. So let's check this out. Let's keep it down. Are y'all done? I appreciate you guys. Right. Let her finish. I know y'all don't like the truth. And it's okay. It's okay. But you can go check minutes and check things and you will see what I'm saying. I always tell you to check facts and then you will know what it is. So anyway. All right. Oh, great. Oh, great. Don't finish my statement. So you can boo all you want. As I was saying, people sat here and didn't say anything. So the elected officials are making their public are comments. You guys are here. Nice. Excuse me? I have the floor. I said I have the elected officials are making their comments. And the thank public you. is next. I, I have my to be quiet. quiet. She tight. She's tight. Hanyard is so upset that Stephanie Weirman was the moderator. You can tell she had no control. And she goes back to her being trying to beat trying to bully stephanie and stephanie stood her ground and she couldn't do what she normally does philip you know we call it filibustering we just sit there and just talk and say she's going to still do that but the the people were able to freely express themselves not just people who didn't like her but people who do like her and you'll see some of that and that nonsense and we'll break down those people and a little bit of their background on really they, they have no credibility a lot of these goons have no credibility. So we need to shut all this down because at the end of the day, Stephanie Hanger needs to be held accountable for all the things that she has done to the township, Dalton, the entire township for, for these many years. You interrupted me by my comment. You wanted me to put order in the room. That's exactly what I did. Okay. As I was stating, moving forward, I hope everybody, including Chris Gonzalez, y'all be as active and as um, wanting information from other municipalities as you do here. I hope y'all. I can't believe she didn't. She still pronounced it that way. I still can't, I can't believe it. <laughs> I go into South Island, Calumet City, Riverdale, Harvey, and ask all these questions that you're asking before us. Because I don't see it being fair that you guys come to one body of government and ask a million one questions. And then when we give you the information, no one writes anything good about all the great things we do here at Thornton Township, including, including the surpluses that we have. Because everybody wants it to continue to be a shit show and not really show facts as it relates to what's really going on in our township. When I took over as your supervisor, I have increased every single department uh, demands as it relates to services to our residents. And you can go through each and every one of our departments and speak to all of our department heads. And they will tell you exactly what we, what we have done and what we have improved. If you want your kids to go to after school we have after school for all and it is free they can learn spanish they can this is the things that they're supposed to do anyway she making it seem like it's something special that only she is able to provide this is the whole purpose of the township 
So I don't know what she's again. It's just that the constant bloviating. She's just passing gas. There's nothing there of substance because they're not. They don't care about what the township provides. It that's the the whole purpose of it. It's what are you doing with the money? Why there's so many issues? Now she says the sur surplus. Obviously, no one believes that. No one believes that. They can learn chemistry. They can learn everything. You out of order. Can I finish my statement, please? And thank you. So we have all those things going over at the Riverdale location. And as it relates to food, if you are hungry, we feed any and everybody in Thorpe Township. So please go to our food pantry in Harvey. We have that. And then if you need a ride to the doctor, to the lab, to the grocery store, we take you for free. These are all the things we do here in Thorpe Township that's free to residents. You have to pay anything that's what people don't tell you but yet we have a surplus so that's what I want to educate the public on stop listening to people that just negative and come and get the proof and the facts for yourself and that way you will know what to do with the information because you are benefiting from it residents you we have service over 10,000 people in GA alone this last year y'all wouldn't have it or hitting on no numbers like that to I can that show you that we really want to service our community and in doing so we have cut costs and we have basically created a surplus, but that's what you're, you're missing because you're so in the mess that you're forgetting the facts of what we really are producing here at Thorne Township. We are a family, despite what you may think or, or say. That's what we are. We're here to help each other, not hurt each other. And it's a shame that us, us, I'm talking to my black and brown communities, will sit here and fight and go back and forth. With they're not falling for it, Tiffany. They're not falling for it anymore. They're just not falling for that. Not at all. Not at all. This is, this is not going to happen. Uh, thank you, Bob, for the $10 super chat. Long uh, Late night crew supports Hannibal. Lovely, lovely. Appreciate that. Morgan with the $2 super chat. Repping the late night crew. And also with a membership gift. Appreciate that. Kendrick with a $10 super chat. Appreciate you supporting Long Late Night Crew. Uh, Misha with uh, YouTube membership. Love that. Love that. D&D &D Bros, another member. Love that as well. Uh, Kathleen Taylor with a $5 super chat. Thank you, Hannibal, for being there for Dalton and supporting the facts with receipts. Thank you. We'll be having those receipts later on as well. And Jay Jones with the 999 super chat. So she's going to just keep bloviating. I want to move on to... she. I mean, I guess you call him a goon. But actually, um, actually, let's, let's, let's put the press release of T.O. Hardiman. So... If you guys are not familiar with T.O. Hardiman, if you've been on my channel for a while, I post a few of his Facebook uh, messages of full support with Tiffany Hayden. His rhetoric is she hasn't been, I guess, arrested yet or indicted. So leave her alone. And no one should be going after a black woman this way, especially black people. It, he, he, he's really on the, I guess, identity race thing. Um, he has a radio show. Uh, now, one of the things that I, I, I assume is positive is he tries to stop the, the shootings and the gang violence in Chicago. But the problem is with this, this way he's going about the rhetoric here, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So he's not happy with Lori Lightfoot being um, selected to investigate Hanyard. Um, and he offered his services. I don't, is, he a, is he a lawyer? Guys in the chat, let me know if you know if T.O. Hardiman is a lawyer. I don't even know. Anyway, he said he's he's... He's down to be a press release. Like he's, he, he released a press release talking about he would investigate Hanyard for free. Um, I'm going to put in a little clip from the late night crew, Shay. He, he showed a, a press release that he put out. Let me, let me put that in real quick here. Again, he's saying that he will investigate this for free. For immediate release. We, we got breaking news. Just read it to yourself. I'm going to go slow. Best I can. So you see right here, um, they picked, you know, they have like Lori Lightfoot paying her $400 an hour to conduct an investigation into the allegations against the current elected mayor. I better hope like I mean I'm goofing off by saying allegations. I hope I don't say that in other conversations, embarrassing myself. 
Um, now he says, while I acknowledge the importance of transparency and accountability in governance, we must also recognize the implications of such as decisions on our community unity and trust in leadership. They do not trust her at all. That's the trust has been broken, guy. You know this. But clearly, there's some connection there that we don't know. Um, or he's just ignorant. I don't even know. If I'm going too fast, screenshot. Now, this right here, this is a quote, again, from T.O. Hardiman. Mayor Tiffany Hayden, who has passionately served Dalton without any conviction of wrongdoing, is facing allegations and scrutiny largely amplified by media and social media platforms. That is not true. I mean, yeah, now it is. But there are people on the ground that were trying to catch attention for years about the concerns they had. This is not just a made-up media thing. They were desperate to bring attention to this. That's why they reached out to many um, YouTubers. They were reaching out to anyone that would listen. And the Attorney General, Kwame uh, Raul, we're going to talk about at least a theory of why hasn't he did anything to, to even look at the situation. This is a big, at this point, a media storm. And this has been going on for months, years. And why this attorney general hasn't done a thing. We got, At least I have a theory on why that has happened. Because it, it seems like it's intentional. That these people have been screaming, begging to, to have the attorney general come in and look at this. And he was has refused. We'll, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Okay, so let me see. Okay, so in the light of this, I am proposing an alternative approach to address the current situation. One that emphasizes uh, uh, reconciliation, community involvement, and the expertise of individuals deeply rooted in our community's fabric. I am offering my services to the Dalton board and the people of Dalton pro bono as a former Dalton property owner. And what? Your lawyer? What can you do? First of all, you just let us all know that you think that she has done nothing wrong and she's been passionately um, leading Dalton and, and Township and Dalton. So why would you be like, what are you going to investigate? You already, she's, she's not guilty. Here. She's black, right? She's a black woman. So she's innocent in your eyes. So what more can you provide other than just bringing attention to yourself? Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So we're gonna show we're gonna show a little bit of his of his uh, speech. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Tito Hardiman. I'm a former resident here at Calumet City. Uh, you know what? The bottom line is, I'm, the, I'm here really to just be straight up with y'all tonight, right? Some people may be good with me. Some people may not be good with me. That's okay. We all human beings. There's nobody in here that's perfect tonight. Not one person sitting here is perfect tonight. All right? No one said that. You're not. You're not being honest with your argument. It's not about who's innocent and who's not, who has made a mistake and who isn't. It's a systematic incompetence and unethical behavior that we're looking at. This is not just a whoopsie do. I spent some money I shouldn't have spent or I done something that I wasn't supposed to do. Or this is a systematic incompetence, systematic destruction of the village M money. The money is gone. And she doesn't want to show what's going. She doesn't want to be transparent because she knows something. She knows something she did is wrong. And she has buried sexual assault allegations, allegedly. So this is not just a whoopsie do. This is a big problem that he seems to, I don't know, again, I don't know what his thoughts process is. Timmy hasn't been charged with any crimes, number one. Give me clearly on this. Not yet. No, I just want y'all to listen to me just for, all I'm asking y'all to do is listen to me for a minute, right? This baby has not been charged with anything, and we ready to throw the baby away with the bath water. When y'all elected Tiffany as a supervisor in Thornton Township, the, the, now, now, wait, now wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's let him no, speak, listen, listen to me. and then you guys can get up to the podium no matter, and you, give your opinion, let him speak. Everybody has an opportunity to speak tonight. Everybody has an opportunity to speak. The bottom line, nobody paid me to come out here. I'm not, I'm not on nobody's payroll, okay? Investigate that. I'm not on nobody's payroll. What I'm saying is black folks, we continue to tear each other down. All the, I want to cuss, but I ain't going to cuss. Check it out. We continue to tear... That's a, that's a lie. He starts cussing soon. Don't worry. 
Each other down all the time. Our division and lack of unity is destroying us as black folks. Why don't we try to mediate with Tiffany instead of investigate? Why don't we immediate? You know what I'm <laughs> Don't you think there's been opportunities for Tiffany Hanger to reach over and talk to the people? This this idea, and it is a, it's a, it's a tactic, it's a tool to try to convince you that you should allow black people to because they have the same skin color as you, is to take advantage of you. So that's okay. But don't don't go to the FBI. Don't try to talk to Attorney General because she's black. She is going, she she allegedly buried a sexual assault charge from a fellow black woman. What are you talking about? This 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 idea doesn't make any logical sense. So it comes to me, it, to me, I feel like. It's possible that he is just ignorant. He's only following skin color. I don't know if the man understands what's going on or all of the evidence that's been presented. It's you should just let her screw you over and try to work it out, even though it's been it's been attempted and she has been sh she has shown that if you disagree with her, she will make your life a living hell. You can't even videotape her if you made some jokes. Jay can tell attest to that. If she doesn't like what you say, she is going to make your life a living hell. Why don't we set for a mediation session with the people in the Thornton Township? Seriously, try to mediate with her first, then if it doesn't work, that's another story, right? You got another election coming up in 2025, deal with this shit then. Seriously, what I'm saying to y'all, what I'm saying to y'all from a man to the body, I, I live out here in Calumet City. Look here, I'm the guy that they call, that, hold up for a minute. I'm the guy that can call to mediate conflicts on the street. I mediate conflicts with politicians. I mediate conflicts with corporate settings as well. <laughs> a lot of people call me, my personal friends call me, say, why are you going out here speaking up for Tiffany? Tiffany's a friend of mine. I'm speaking up, but I'm going to speak up for any goddamn way. You know what I'm saying? Now, hear me clearly on this. Before I get out of here, I'm going to say this. If he, it would be nice if he had that same energy and that same passion for the people who have who are currently 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 suing her, who had lost their jobs? Does he have the same energy for Sandra Tracy, the um, the HR um, director at the township that was fired, that they refused to pay her for several paychecks, and she was so upset and 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 so overwhelmed that she had a heart attack? Does he have that same level of passion for a fellow black woman that was taking care of a black man, her husband? And she's res she's responsible for the finances in that in that household, and she couldn't pay her she couldn't pay her bills. She needed her money, she needed her check. Where's the passion there? Where's the protect the black women there? That's why this this argument doesn't make any sense. Everybody out here, okay? Before I get out of here, I'm asking y'all to mediate this thing with Tiffany before passing judgment on her. Check it out. Listen to me with some reason here. It's issues on both sides, goddammit. Both sides got issues. It's not just one side. It's issues on both sides. Mediate the conflict first, and then you pass your judgment. That's all I'm saying. Black folks have been under the gun for centuries, man. Centuries. We condemn each other. We charge each other with a bunch of stuff out here without no proof positive on it. All of us got issues. There's not one person in here that ain't got no issue, man. Let's stop playing games. Well, yeah, let's stop playing games. I'm, I don't want no money. Let me be clear with y'all. All I want to do is mediate this thing and bring it back to love and happiness out here in Thornton Township. You can always have naysayers. Listen to me. Everybody's double talking, cross talking, and all that kind of shit there. Let me say this to y'all. <laughs> we know what? The, I lack of discipline. I lack of discipline is killing us. It's killing us. And I ain't going to overdo it. I ain't going to overdo it. I just want to say that out of respect for the process. And you know what? All right, uh, we're, we're done. We're done with him. Uh, let's go through a few more just, uh, chats before we get into one of. Actually, we, I think we'll go with Michael Smith first. I think we'll go with Michael Smith uh, and his rant and him losing his mind. And if you saw my video earlier, and there's more, obviously, of of who this person is. But let's go through the super chats real quick. Um, Four nine nine from Steve Schnack. Appreciate you. Excited to be a new member. Excited to have you. Appreciate you, Doctor Nikita Cloud. Much love. I thank you very much. Thank you for you have been uh, instrumental in trying to push this uh, issue with 
what the super mayor has been doing for so long and it looks like it's currently working it looks like the momentum is on the people's side so it's much love to you nikia cloud around the hooks for the five dollar super chat long uh, late night crew appreciate you appreciate you uh carefree with the 199 super chat appreciate you love your show your voice is smooth delivery appreciate it thank you very much um kendra thank you for joining the team love you love you love you uh, Misha, uh, for the 499 Super Chat Late Night Crew, hashtag much love. And Lucille Fox with the 999 Super Chat. Appreciate you, Seal. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's get into, let's get into my, uh, Michael real quick. Um, the Connect the Dots guy. Remember the Connect the Dots guy? He was at the regular board meeting. Just to make sure you guys know who I'm talking about. He was definitely at that meeting as well. Let's let's pop in and sh let me show you guys. Um, oh wait 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 we got Sherry here. Oh, hold on, no, we're going we're going to take a break with Michael and we're going to talk about some Keith. Um, Sherry, let me know if you're ready. You can throw a thumbs up if you're ready. Um, so I can see you. So let me know when you're ready. You can put the thumbs up there. Um, let's let's talk about some Keith real quick and then just show this one screenshot of of what he what he sends to people on Facebook. He seems like he has some anger issues and we'll be talking about that as well, but it seems like he is one of the main goons, the one, the main mudslingers that is there exploiting multiple areas, exploiting how he, he does his business. And this crazy, it's just a crazy allegiance to the super mayor and how he does his thing. So let me show you, um, one one slide here of the kind of messages he sends to people who do not agree with the super mayor. So let me let me pop it in real quick here. <clears throat> and I showed this before, but have we definitely have a, a bigger audience right now? Um, I said you have a lot of file each, but oh, hold on, so now I gotta delete some stuff. Hold on, hold on. I guess I have too much. Too much, too much stuff I've been on this stream yard here. I guess I'm, I'm, okay, it's uploading right now. Okay. So, um, I'm going to, uh, Jerry, let me know if you're ready. You can throw a thumbs up if you're ready and got it all good to go. But, okay, awesome. So, um, Sherry had to put this out here. She was threatened by a township employee during work hours. Why is he even on social media worrying about what I'm saying? Got to put it on paper because we all see and we'll do anything. Yeah, people will do anything for her boss. So he basically, you can see what's circled here, send who you don't like at me because I'm sure you would, you would want to see your loved ones again, ma'am. That's a legit threat. Like, like that doesn't make any sense and that is keith price that is his account he, he still posts things up to this day um saying that despite the distractions um the township is in the black and, and again the super mayor is awesome there's nothing wrong with her but he has a serious anger issue and he throws a lot of threats around but let me bring in sherry real quick to talk about this but let's let's get this let's get this out of the way so they can see you sherry can you hear me Yes, I can hear you. Awesome. Thank you very much. It's interesting. It's the first time you've been on the channel because mm -hmm. you've helped me and a lot of the content creators out here forever. I mean, I, I think you're probably the first one to ever contact me and I'm indebted to you um, trusting me with, with um, a lot of this stuff and you telling me about this situation. I think the first time we had like the long, longer conversation, I was blown away. I think it was, it was a bit overwhelming. All of the mm -hmm. issues that 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 the super mayor is involved with, but we, we're going to focus on Keith Price. So, tell me a little bit about your, I guess, your history, but as well as Keith Price in general. Like, why would a man, any kind of, you know, I guess you could consider him a politician or something. I know he ran, he ran for things or whatever, but to send that kind of message to someone who disagrees with him, like I don't understand the thought process. But maybe you have a better understanding of who this man is. So. Other than him, um, I guess he ran or was an alderman in Harvey, which is the neighboring town to us. It's one town west over over west from Dalton. Um, I just I don't understand his um, deal with being so focused. I mean, the township, I guess, 
but the Dalton thing and being so involved in wanting us residents in Dalton just to sit back and let this mayor slash supervisor just run over us and not give us uh, any of the information we need, you know, as far as transparency and things of that nature. Um, uh, as far as him, the anger issues, I don't know him like that. Mm. You know, I met him a couple of times. You know, we've talked on Facebook, uh, but I think that he just goes a little too hard and too far when it comes to defending her, especially when he, you know, he doesn't know what we go through. You know, it's not, and it's not his business. Right. Yeah, it's Personally, sound, it's, that's what it's I like, think. It seems like it's it's similar to Tio's rhetoric or to a certain extent of they're not he they're not there they don't they're not watch i guess they don't care about the coverage from many news news um stations the people who have the, who are questioning things the, the the assault allegations they don't seem to care about any of that it's protect this woman at all costs and a cost to to threaten you like to say to say you would you know you would like to see your loved ones again. I mean, how how did you feel? I mean, I know, but just for everyone else to kind of have that uh, to understand what you what you went through. Like, what 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 was going your through your head when you saw that message on your face? So actually, so what happens with me is because you know I've been in this fight for almost three years. Um, I don't really do a whole lot of going back and forth with anyone on Facebook. Um, and what I don't do is like, you know, there are a lot of people, they'll attack uh, people's families and things of that nature. I don't do that. I'll put the facts out. I might say something, but not, you know, attacking folks' family and things of that nature. I just don't do that. So in actuality, I didn't see it in the beginning. Uh, people were sending it to me. Mm -hmm. And my, my, my first honest, um, to be honest, was I afraid? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, but I was just like, what? This is just, it's just crazy. Mm -hmm. And they do anything. I mean, why would you do this other than for a paycheck? Because as, a, as an adult, we're all adults. Um, everybody has significant others. If people are married, boyfriends, this, that, and the third. I just don't understand why adult men, and there are quite a few of them, who are married and have wives and all that, they're going so hard for this girl on social media for what? It's got to be for a job, a relationship. What is it? Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't know. Um, other pe A lot of people did take the threat probably more seriously than I did. Mm -hmm. Did I like it? No. Um, but I think other people took the threat more seriously than I did because, um, I mean, I can say now that I got a visit uh, from the powers that be about that on Valentine's right. Day. Yeah. And um, people just, they don't want to see things like that. And I think what's scary about it is, is this is an administration uh, for a township. And then you've got a police department, you know, going a little further into it. Mm -hmm. I mean, to feel you know, a lot of people feel unsafe because of things like that. And it's happening just like on social media. It's yeah. happening uh, on video at board meetings. I mean, I just think it's ultimately nuts that this kind of thing can happen. And it's still happening. I mean, when I tell you they are going hard for her, I mean, and at the end of the day, if they don't do exactly what she says, she won't pay them. Mm -hmm. Or she'll 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 dump them, you know what I mean? She'll right, just right. dump them. So I just think it's one hundred percent crazy um, that this type of stuff is happening. Now I you know I wouldn't be so foolish as to come for anybody. And then when you when you put these threats out and say, well, they came for me, I didn't come for him. First of all, if you look at the whole entire chat, he said I deleted it. I did not delete it, delete it. I just blocked him because at that point it had just gone too far. And it's like, I'm not going to deal with people like that. Right. Um, I had gotten threats and people had made fake accounts. And I know exactly who made the fake accounts and, you know, 
did say some crazy stuff about my, my husband. They don't know my husband. My husband is not on social media. And it was like, they do anything. And then you'll get people like Mr. Hardiman, who knows nothing about Dalton. He can't give her a chance. You don't know what she's doing to people. Yeah, obviously. You know, people get threatened every day. People get threatened. Their water gets cut off. I mean, they don't get services. If that mayor doesn't like you, she sends her goons after you. But her goons need to pay attention to what you're doing because they're going to end up blackballing themselves. Yeah. I mean, she's not going to be in power forever. And people are not going to just forget. Some, Some may forgive and forget, but some may not. And some, they'll never, obviously never will forget what they have done. It just seems to be, and I'm sure you checked out a lot of what happened at the township meeting. Maybe it's what you're saying. I mean, tell me your thoughts about, I watched, I couldn't Mm -hmm. sleep. Like I watched the entire thing front to back. But tell me your thoughts about that meeting and how they behaved. Okay, so. They all seem batshit crazy. <laughs> I mean, it was, I mean, I have never, I mean, that was hands down. Now, you know how the Dalton meetings are. They're yeah, a clown a, show. They're yeah, a fiasco. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. And, and so it's just like when you go, when you go to the special board meetings, you know, it's just about business. So Tiffany would never show up to a special board meeting that we have at the Dalton Park District because A, she can't control it, and B, it's not going to be a circus. You you know what I mean? But that last night, and I mean, how how Michael Smith was yelling and Mm. going off. I mean, it was just crazy, the attacks. And I'm just saying, it just seems like everybody that is going hard for her and everybody that's in her um, circle, they seem to be abusive. (laughs) Uh, as we, and, I mean, uh, you know, and we'll we'll go into uh, <laughs> a little bit after, you know, after we talk, we'll go more into Keith Price's history and then Michael Smith's history. But mm-hmm. I think what you said is dead on. They are behaving because you know sometimes you, you believe like it's a, a cult situation, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You are all in the cult. You're all in. No one can get you out. Mm-hmm. You've you've been. People have talked to you. They tried to reach out. But you now, since you have to justify being in this cult with this cult of personality, that you will have to do everything to defend it. Because first, you just like defending your mm-hmm. own identity because you've you've got you're so far deep into this, you don't want to tell yourself, "Wow, I really made a bad mistake." But now you have to go even harder to prove to her. Like right. I said, money could be right. your money could be taken away, and this is a big mm-hmm. difference between changing your mind. Like you know, I think even on the the um. Dalton Politics uh, uh, page, uh, Facebook page, you know, they tried, someone Mm -hmm. tried to put a picture with you with, or had a picture with you and Tiffany as if Mm -hmm. it's Mm -hmm. it's, it's not okay to change your mind. It's a rational human beings can change their minds when they see things not going the right direction. But it looks like with with Price and Michael Smith, they can't do it. It's like, it's impossible Mm -hmm. for them to change their minds. So I can give you a little bit of that history. So what happened was, um, we had a mayor and he was horrible and, you know, he was, he was terrible. And so there was a group of us that, you know, we just wanted to make sure people knew that we needed to, to vote him out. Mm -hmm. Tiffany was vocal. I mean, and she was, uh, she was a little rough around the edges, but nobody thought that she would be this cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, bananas, Mm -hmm. or, you know, evil she's she's it seems like she's evil now i mean when you look at her how she displayed herself at that township meeting last night and especially when the young lady when they talked about when uh jedediah talked about the young lady and how you need to you know apologize to her and and you didn't think about her and she had this smirk on her face i was just so outdone now that could have been a nervous smirk but yeah. I, I just don't think so at this point because she just seems to to really not care. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was one of those things before all that. She wasn't showing that she had a team. The team was the, they call themselves the dream team. And they had all these plans for Dalton to make th- make some changes. You know, nobody knew that she was a nut. 
and nobody knew that she had plans. See, the thing of it is, is when a person has plans and you don't know about them, you just don't know about them. So a lot of people, when they say, oh, you guys knew how she was, she was not showing any signs of what what is happening now. Yeah, she was a little bit. And she used to go hard at Riley Rogers because he was doing the wrong thing, too. Right. And then she would all and, and you you see videos out here now where they say show her when she was a trustee. Yeah, she was going hard on him, but she was bringing some real facts like right. how, you know, she would say, like, you can't give us the board packet uh, the day before a meeting and this and then the third. And what is her administration doing? That's what they're <laughs> doing. Same thing. Same yeah. thing. And then people say, well, you get what you did, you know, what you voted for. Yeah. Not necessarily. Have you ever voted and then said this person isn't doing what they're supposed to do? And then they say, oh, y'all, you all voted for her because she was a black woman. Duh. Dalton is 95 percent black people. Right. So it wasn't because she was a black woman. Nobody else was running. A we really wanted Jason House to run. He did not run. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. it was it was Andrew Holmes ran the, the terrible mayor that we had before and her. And so people were standing behind her because we thought that she would listen to a team. I mean, they had plans to do right. She didn't have plans to do right. So to show a picture with me of her uh, three years ago when she won, that was the night that she won the primary. Yeah. So what? So, I mean, and that's not even, I, I mean, I guess you could say I changed my mind. It, it's not that I changed my mind. She flipped the script and we, I couldn't, right is right and wrong is wrong. She's wrong. And we had yeah. no idea. You know what I mean? So that's what that was all about. She just went rogue. She went rogue. Yeah. And I, you mentioned her not feeling. I, I, I've noticed that. Not necessarily, I mean, I saw that at the township meeting, but what really struck me was at the, the last regular board meeting on the first and Carol Wilson was talking and I'm noticing mm -hmm. like the fact that she never, ever even just offered a condolences saying, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sorry what, for what happened, regardless of what you think who was right or wrong, like that her daughter is gone. Mm -hmm. And, and that mayor have a, she has a daughter. It just, you would yeah. think just that connection of being a mother to a daughter, that something mm -hmm. happened that's tragic, regardless of what you think went, who was right or wrong. That she never told her, regardless of now the beef and just say, hey, I, I am sorry for your loss. She right. just, and it, it's not just her, but it's other people that were saying, you know, my loved one was murdered. My mm -hmm. loved one was hurt. She she doesn't have any sense of empathy at all. And that's dangerous, I think, if for leadership. Like, you have right. no feelings. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, as far as I know, as far as I know, I know she has not spoken to Kara Wilson. I, you know, I... I consider Kara a friend. I mean, literally, she is a friend. Um, and I know she hasn't reached out to her. Uh, LaKendra Williams was the fiance of Darius uh, okay, yes. Wilson also. Mm -hmm. um, I know that she has not reached out to her either. So again, especially if something happens to someone at the hands of or, you know, the Dalton Police Department, right or wrong, the mayor can at least reach out and say, I'm sorry for your loss. Yeah. So that, ne that never happened. Um, and I think whatever she said, and, you know, I actually did not see Tiffany's press conference with the uh, Alexis Wilson case. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me, but I do know that she said something totally ridiculous. And then instead of saying, coming out and saying, I'm sorry, because I, if I could remember, we were going to have a board meeting and um, the family thought she was going to come and make an apology. And instead, she didn't show up for the meeting. And she told the Dalton police to let the clerk know if that if we went into that building, everybody would get arrested. Wow. So um, senior trustee house did an impromptu like kind of. We just were outside and had like a little, it wasn't official, but like a town hall. And then from there we set up and we had that one meeting where you saw we were outside and then we had the big interruption and all that good stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, listen, Tiffany has not spoken to the residents 
other than she's had a couple of her uh, talk coffee or talks with the uh, mayor or whatever. And from my understanding, she just talks. I mean, she's she never answers questions. Mm -hmm. Never no, answers questions. Never, ever answers questions. And legally, she's not supposed to do that. This public comment is it's citizens. It should be citizens addressed. No one voted on a change to make it public, just public comment. We should still be having citizens addressed where the citizens can ask their questions and the department heads and the board of trustees along with administration, the administration can answer those questions. She won't do that. And mm -hmm. she, she'll do anything to keep from speaking to the public. And that's what's key. That's what leads to canceling these meetings. Right. Cause she hasn't had the uh, two meetings in a month for how long yes. now? Um, I want to say we're probably at 12 or 13 now that have been canceled. I know in 2023, I think there were 11 canceled. Right. Yeah. So, and the, that, the set? yeah, that looks like, I'm that's sorry, go ahead. Continue. that sounds like that's going to probably continue. I don't think there'll be another uh, one this month. What do you think? Mm -mm. Well, the, I believe that what's going to start happening now is the, the four trustees will have a meeting and then they'll have it at the park district, which she keeps calling it the secret squirrel meeting. There's nothing <laughs> secret about it. Um, and it is legal. As long as they have a quorum, they can call a meeting um, yeah. and have a mayor pro tem. Because if it was, if that, if that weren't the case, you wouldn't be able to call a meeting and have a mayor pro tem. If Tiffany doesn't want to show up to a meeting, she just doesn't show up. Right. She doesn't show up. That doesn't mean that the business doesn't get taken care of. So yeah. does that mean is does that mean if she decides that we're not going to have any meetings, we're just not going to have them? Like I said, the business of of governing needs to continue, whether one person is there or not. Um, I know she right. probably regret going to that township meeting. Uh, if she knew that this was going to go the way she went, she probably wouldn't exactly. show up for that because her image and her ego is more important mm -hmm. than the than the the lives of the people that she's supposed to be helping mm -hmm. and protecting their rights. Don't seem like that's happening. But um, what is your what's your view? Do you think um, about, I guess, the direction of the investigations, all the things that's going on, what's, what's your hope? Do you think things are going in the right way, or right direction? I do. Actually, I do. I think that it's taken a long time. And, you know, and for the people who are just like really getting into this um, and they have a lot of questions as to why we didn't do certain things and what we didn't do and but we did. And that's what people don't understand. We have reached out to people, higher ups in the state, um, the attorney general, state's attorney, uh, you know, DOJ, B BGA, all those people. Uh, we, we've kept going to the reporters. In fact, back in November of 2021, um, I spoke to Dane Placco. He's a local um news reporter for Fox 32. Yeah. Um, and we were talking about having some kind of, you know, protest because she had hired um, a, the former village administrator before Keith Freeman. Um, and we just felt like she wasn't a fit and, you know, she didn't, you know, she didn't have really have the board support on that. And um, the former village administrator, she had her own issues in Chicago I mean, she seemed like a nice lady, but, you know, she just shouldn't be there. And right. so we had and he said, well, you know what? Just have a couple dozen people out there and express yourself. Say that you want her gone. And so we did that. And then shortly after that, she announced that she was leaving. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, you know, it's just one of those things where. We have been day one. I mean, and she'll say, oh, they they've been trying to get you. She started off wrong. She right. started off lying about like even um, it was as simple as fireworks. They had they she couldn't get she wanted to spend all this money on fireworks. And then instead of, you know, she would say, oh, well, I'm getting a check from this person and that person. She was lying. She said, oh, I'm waiting for a check from the school board, uh, District 148. So. As she was saying that, I emailed the school board president and asked, 
was he giving Dalton money? And he said, absolutely not. And I and I, I can send you that because I actually do have that email. Right. You know, so, it's just she's been lying since day one. And it's like you won't show receipts. I mean, who I mean, they want you to vote on things well, the board to vote on things. And they want she wants the residents to just so, OK, well, do whatever you want to do and just deal with it because she's a black single mother. How many black <laughs> single mothers are there on the planet? Stop. Yeah, it, it, it's a, just another way to uh, try to find ways to manipulate people. But it looks like yeah. it's, it's definitely not working. So, um, Sherry, right. I really appreciate you coming through and, and shining some light on some of the things. I'm sure there was common questions on why they didn't do this and that. It's all been exhausted. I mean, this is where you guys are. And, and it took a while, but you guys are finally getting momentum. So I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm happy that that things are going in that right direction because I know you guys are probably exhausted from all this nonsense and hopefully you know, some <laughs> At, you know absolutely and because it's been three years and we've been working really really hard and I have to thank you because honestly you have been one of the people there are some others but you uh in particular stand out for me you and Pink Book you guys stand out you have listened to us and you've been there and it's, it's just been um, 100% appreciated. I'm sure I can speak for Dr. Nikita, Stephanie, a lot, a lot of people who, uh, Miss Stubbs, everybody. We just really appreciate what you're doing for us because I'm gonna tell you, I have never in my, see, I cast my first vote in 1987, okay? Mm -hmm. That's how long ago mm -hmm. I cast my, well, I'm, telling my age, I guess I don't want to do that. <laughs> but um, I cast my first vote in 1987 and never in my life have I regretted a vote ever until now. Yeah. So again, it's, it's just one of those things. But you know what? I think, like you said, with the investigation, I think we're moving in the right direction. I think there with uh, Ms. Lifer coming on, she was a great prosecutor um, federal prosecutor at that. And I believe that she'll shake things up and I think she'll get other uh, people in the state moving so we could go ahead and do something about this because there is no way the township will survive with a whole year because we have until May, she loses those. I mean, the election is in February, mm -hmm. but the new whoever is going to be the supervisor and the mayor won't take their seats until May. That's a year and a month or well, a little less than a month, a year, and a little less than a month. Yeah. There's no way this buffoonery can go on for 12 months. It'll it, it'll devastate the community. Definitely. Because, you know, we, the full extent of the damage hasn't had been, I guess, truly um, seen yet because of all the things that have been hidden. So uh, the faster things can go to hold her accountable, the better. So. Thank you very much for coming mm -hmm. through. We're going to continue on with this Absolutely. goofball, Keith Price. But okay. uh, we'll back <laughs> and hopefully some more good news happens and then we can all talk Anytime. about that. So, uh, you know, obviously okay. you're always welcome. But thank you very much for coming through. Okay. Thanks. See you later. See you later. Much love to Sherry. She's amazing. Um, let me go through uh, a few more. I think I saw some more uh, super chats here. Uh, the late road, late night crew, $10. Appreciate that. Much love, Sherry. Definitely. And 99 from George, those around her listening at the table, sitting next to her, what they're thinking, the woman with the gold Cartier glasses seems to sing her praises. I mean, it kind of going with what Sherry said that, you know, a lot of people are there because they need a check. Um, and they, I, I don't know, some of them probably really fell into the spell of whatever, all the things she's saying. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But let's, let's check out... Um, Keith Price. So he had some things to say about the regular board meeting. He was there at the township. I didn't hear a lot what he was saying. Um, probably wasn't all that interesting, but he was really upset about the, the regular board meeting. Um, then bringing on Lightfoot. Let's see what he had to say. Uh, the actions of man. As far as I'm concerned, the desperate actions of the Dalton trustees at this time 
it's, it's actually, I gotta stay in one spot. I gotta find a good spot and just stay still. So, as many of you know, and it's been all over the world news about all the uh, conflicts in Dalton. Well, today, the Dalton trustees continued a meeting that they postponed from the regular meeting in which they were supposed to override the mayor's veto. If anyone knows how that procedure goes, just to give you, just to give you a quick breakdown. Okay, trustees can pass something. Oh, come on, get your phone. They, they postponed the meeting till tonight and they walked out. Right then and there, they blew their chance to override her veto. Once they left that regular meeting, that regularly scheduled meeting, although they tried to be slick and postpone it, there are still rules and laws that need to be followed when you are relocating a meeting venue. There are rules that you must follow. You can't just come to a regular meeting and say, oh, we're going to postpone it because a lot of people are outside. No, you can't. You can only let in as many people as you can let in, and then you are to do your meeting. Uh, now, he talks about, he talks about, I can stop listening to him. He's talking about rules and procedures. Is he, is he just deaf, dumb, and blind? Rules and procedures. You, the super mayor has not followed a lot of those rules and procedures, Keith. But you must know that. So let's get more into the history of Keith Price and beyond just a, you know throwing out threats. Um, there's a, there was a comment that was under one of my videos, and I I have a good idea that this actually happened. I'll just say it like that. But let me show that. I'm gonna show that vi that little picture real quick of of Keith uh. Uh, Price, I'm about to say Freeman, and the things that he he likes to throw a lot of threats, a lot of threats at people. Real, real, real little small little message, and I saw this on a, on um, one of my videos. So this person, uh, I got a call today from Keith Price after I called him, confronting him on his actions, and this is the actions of him uh, sending Sherry that uh, Facebook message. And Keith Price not only confirmed he made those death threats, but Keith Price is also alleging that he's a military veteran who has been shot multiple times and served in the military when there was no records of this. The funniest part is how um, I guess uh, Price tried to say that he's going to come after me and happy charge for calling him out. And the funny part is I live in Colorado and he still made the call from his business office. So he's not a very smart person. He's not a smart person. He also wants to flash illegal guns on his Facebook page. So what I did today was not only contact the news, I contacted the FBI and the ATF. <laughs> um, sources close to me say that Price did get that visit from one of those entities. And that's the reason why during that meeting, he wasn't the one yelling and screaming, even though I think physically he's not able to do a lot of that. No, no shade. It's just, he, he's not, he does not look healthy in that meeting. And I guess Michael Smith hasn't got that call, but he was kind of subdued compared to how everyone else was acting because he, he had a visit from one of those to tell him, we're watching you, stop your nonsense. Because at this point uh, in our society, threats online are taken extremely seriously. You can't just say whatever you want. And also, the part of the best thing to do is not throw threats on your business line, you idiot, because that doesn't help. Because they know exactly who you are. And then when you throw threats, people will contact the necessary authorities. Because again, they take this very seriously. They probably realize that you work for the super mayor and thought, well, the super mayor has a lot of goons with around her. You probably are a problem. So you had that visit. And I'm sure that you are chill now compared to how you were before. Let's talk about some of this history. Um, I'm going to present uh, this one time that he broke some dude's jaw. 
Uh, let me see. Let me put this in here. <clears throat> Just slowly, slowly processing. All right. Um, don't worry, I'll read most of this, but uh, just a, this is a case right here. Um, and this was a court order from the appellate court in Illinois. So this case involved a plaintiff. His name was Christopher Wilson against the city of Harvey and the resident uh, and the defendant and resident Keith Price was an elected official of the city of Harvey. So the appeal concerns whether the city can be held liable for Price's actions under the Illinois Local Government and Governmental Employees Immunity Act. So let me get the background. Let me explain the background of what's going on in this case. So this situation involved Keith Price serving as an alderman for the city of Harvey. He physically attacked Christopher Wilson during a dispute over illegally parked cars in front of Midnight Auto Express. It was a car repair shop where Wilson was an employee. The attack resulted in... Wilson sustaining major injuries, including a broken jaw. This fool is sitting there fighting people. He is an elected official, and he gets to a point where he broke this guy's jaw. So you have to take his threats seriously because something is wrong with him, clearly. So Price, at the time of this issue, this altercation, he was an elected official, receiving a salary, health benefits, an expense account uh, from the city, and he, but, you know, considered an officer rather than an employee. So Wilson filed a civil uh, lawsuit against Price in the city, this, uh, asserting the city liability over the actions of Price and what he did. Um, let, me, let me see if I can see. I know this is super small, but I'll put, I'll put, I'll put something at the ending here. So... But unfortunately, the, the circuit court granted um, in favor of the city, concluding that there was no genuine issue of the material fact regarding the city's immunity from liability under this act. I forget, what's the act that's called? Let me, let, me, let me look this up real quick. The Illinois Tort Immunity Act. So he's saying that Price and City asserting the city's liability under the Illinois Tort Immunity Act for Price's actions, but the court found that there was no general issue of the material fact regarding that act. So they're saying that, noting if Price was considered an employee, his actions physically assaulting Wilson was outside the scope of his aldermanic duties. All right, I'm not a lawyer. I'm just going by what the case said, but... What the hell? I don't know. So the court emphasized that price actions served no legislative purpose and what and was a personal matter. That's not falling into his statutory granted authority as an alderman. Like, all right. I mean, this is what. But the reason why I brought this up is he has a history of being a really terrible person. And he, you know, I it's interesting that the city or the court went along with with uh, against this guy who had his jaw broken, but it shows like something is seriously wrong with this guy. Seriously wrong with this guy. So there's another case I want to show you guys that involved uh, Keith Price. Because again, he's talking about following the rule of law, right? Upset with the other trustees and what they're doing. You got to follow the rule of law. Okay, well, let's let's take out another case here. And hit that like button if, uh, if you haven't already. Truly really appreciate it. Okay, so again, it's a lot of words, but I'll provide links to this so you guys can check it out. But let's let's look at another one. Let's actually let's also let's wait, wait, yeah. So just to go, so you guys know who Keith Price is. You see, the super mayor. He's he's a he's basically helping the super mayor do whatever that he you know is done over there, and a fierce loyal supporter of of this woman, and his history shows that he's a scumbag too. So. This this case right here is Patterson versus uh don't let me actually, hold on let me see, make sure I get this let me sure I get this correct hold on a second guys but I think this is the right case but I want to double I want to make sure that I have the correct file here wait what I see. Let's see here. 
Okay, it's good. Okay, so Patterson versus Dungaro. Or Dungaro. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, but so this is happening back in 2020, uh, 2020, no, 2012, by the New York State's uh, District Court of the Northern District of Illinois Eastern Division. Division involves the plaintiff. Uh, his name is Javon Patterson. Alleged a series of wrongful acts against him, leading to his false ac um, accusation, arrest. And he was imprisoned for a crime that he did not commit. So this is some serious stuff, guys. So Patterson was approached in January 2006 to assist in stealing cocaine, which he refused. Despite his re refusal, the cocaine was allegedly stolen, and Patterson was later accused of involvement. After a murder of an individual who actually stole the cocaine, Patterson was arrested on April 24th, 2006. His conviction was later reversed and he was awarded a certificate of innocence after serving almost two and a half years in prison. So imagine that. You spent two and a half years in prison for a crime you did not commit. Absolutely insane. You know, at least blow it up for you guys to get a little bit up here. So you guys can see it as I, as I talk here. Like absolutely insane. Same, right? So Pattinson's complaint uh, includes several claims. It's on, unlawful arrest and detention, conspiracy, malicious prosecution, and the Mon uh, Monell claim against the city of Harvey. So the defendants include the city of Harvey, Keith Price, Eric Kyle-Log, Jonathan Cook, Sam White, and Detective Hollis. Uh, so they filed motions to, to, to dismiss these various claims, but the, the court dismissed all those claims against Sam White. And what, what Keith Price's involvement is, and I'll, I'll go a little bit further in that. So Keith Price, in this case, he was impl implicated in a series of events surrounding the wrongful accusation, arrest, and prosecution of Patterson. So according to the allegations, Patterson was falsely accused of being in this involvement of theft of, of, of cocaine that he was not involved in. So all this is basically the conspiracy, right? The conspiracy, the case that alleged that Keith Price, along with other defendants, conspired to falsely accuse Patterson of this crime he did not commit. They tried to pro provide false information, inc potentially including Keith Price, provided false information to further the criminal prosecution against Patterson and threatening behavior. So the, there's allegations that suggests that certain defendants in the pursuit of this stolen cocaine threatened to frame Patterson for a crime he did not commit if he did not return the cocaine, which he claimed he had no knowledge of. So this is the kind of scumbag behavior that we're dealing with. Like this is this is what we got, this is what we're dealing with here. And uh, uh, you know, Keith Price is not a good guy. Yeah, I think that's good. That, that goes without saying. He's not a good person. He's been uh, accused of mismanaging funds when he was an alderman, um, taking money, exploiting the expenses, kind of similar to the mayor, very similar to the mayor. He is the kind of person that does this kind of stuff. So I'm going to show you a little another link real quick. Just break it down a little bit of his history. And I'll try, I'm going to try to remember to put these links on the um, on the description so you guys can read them see and, and so you guys can see exactly what i what i'm what i'm seeing here oh, i don't need a full i don't need a full layout now nah, we do a little less like there here oh wait got so much stuff on the screen there go my dogs barking Let's see. So, the price and cost of Price career career criminal, career criminal, from the city of Harvey from 2007 into today. So, I'm gonna go through all of this, but there's obviously a focus on Keith Price, the alderman in the city of Harvey, and the various things that he has done. So, Keith Price has a criminal history. And it's, it is recognized by the public in the courts. This is not something that we're all making up. And despite this, he has political ambitions, right? 
Um, there's hints that he's trying to, I mean, I guess at one point he wanted to be mayor. I doubt that's going to happen now, clearly. I mean, you you sat there and you're defending one of the the worst mayors who have ever mayored over anything. Like this idea that he'll never get to that point. And maybe that's the reason why he is so interested in trying to um, defend this person. Without without the super mayor, what does he have? Like he lost all credibility. Right. And this in this web in this site, we're just just presenting a critical view of Keith Price's actions and character, questioning his suitability for public office. Um, his suitability to run a, a, a damn lemonade stand. But giving all these allegations, he should not be running anything. You know, and right now he needs he needs to um get his health together, to, to be completely honest. But he, and I will talk more about him. I'm sure there could be more information. If you have more, more information about Keith Price, let me know. But he seems like he has anger issues. He throws threats online to multiple people, multiple people, not just Sherry, but I just read another one that I'm, I, sources tells me that that reason and many other reasons why he had that visit with one of those, um, one of those alphabet uh, uh, organizations. He needs to chill out. And another person needs to chill out seriously needs to chill out is is michael smith this guy was on one during this meeting what was what was he doing i'm sure if you have seen it he he was like losing his mind he was letting everyone know that he truly wants a job or something i, I don't know it, it didn't make any sense uh, let's check out actually let me see if i could sh let me show you uh, let's see. Open. Let me let me show you what he did. The uh, let me show you exactly who he is. He's the dots guy. If you've been around, um, you've noticed that a lot of people have thrown out the dots. It's kind of like a, a little bit of a running joke. Um, he was at the regular board meeting on the first of April, and this this is who he is. Uh, tonight, um, as a neighboring resident in the village of Riverdale, and. I like to see people involved in the media, but here it is. I have an indicted mayor that's serving in our community and we don't have this much media coverage going on. Let's, let's, let's show this. Let me, let me bring, let me bring this off. Wait, wait, hold on a second. I got, I got too much, got too much stuff on here. Let me look at the banner. Let me move, wait, where am I at? Hold on a second. Okay, let me move this. Let's bring this here. Now, I, you know what? I'm, you know what? Let me, let me, um, let me present the, the screen. So at least I want you guys to read this. I mean, the problem is they're having this on a, a special overlay. Let me, um, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make this bigger so you guys can all read this along with me. So give me, let me give you a second, real quick, of what this guy was doing in a school. It's supposed to be taking care of the kids, protecting the kids. So let me, let me, uh, I'm going to show you real quick. And we'll, we'll do like a few pictures so you guys can see exactly what was said. And if you haven't subscribed before, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Let's try to get this out as much as possible. Just, I want you guys to know the kind of people that she trusts. Just to see if anyone else that feels like there's a middle ground or maybe or maybe she's not that bad. No. No, she's bad. She's bad. Look at her circle. You, you Sometimes, for most of us, it's all about your circle, who you surround yourself with. And this is who she surrounds herself with. Oh, let me, let's just do this first one right here. So, this was in the high school, uh, Thornton Fractional High School. Uh, the superintendent will recommend your dismissal as an employee of this district at a meeting of the Board of Education on Wednesday, uh, May 9th, 2018. At 5 p.m., the meeting will take place at administrative offices. <laughs> so Dr. Craig will report the Board of Education to as your performance and will charge you with the following infractions. So you can see this dude is a total creep. Disgusting man that should not be around children at all he's sexually harassing female students grooming students inappropriate aggressive behavior towards a male student because i guess maybe he didn't want you michael 
a failure to follow uh, district policies and procedures, failure to cooperate with an administrator of an official inquiry, investigation, or other official proceedings, including making false, inaccurate, or deliberately incomplete statements. This is the kind of people that Tiffany Hayard was clapping and, and, and was very excited that this person was supporting her. What does that say about her character? She probably shouldn't be leading anything. If she thinks that person needs to be uh, protected or to be listened to. Oh, yeah, he's, he's spitting. He's cooking right now. Cooking what? This is, is this, this is disgusting behavior. Right? So, so at a meeting, so there's another one. Let me show you another piece, another letter that happened later on, just to kind of show that, you know, he had no chance. It, there was no way he was going to continue with this job. Uh, actually, we got another, oh, we got some more information. Let's go more into this, but I'm going I'm to put this here. So you guys, we can read, read, read together. Let's see with the overlay, and then let's go to. Let's see here. Okay, let's 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 hide that. Bring that back. So let's 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 read this all together. So, so when we look right here. Uh, on March 28th, 2018, the Executive Director of Human Resources and the Executive uh, Director of Student Services held a fact-finding meeting with Mr. Michael Smith, Dean's Assistant at the Center for Alternative Learning, to discuss the allegations that he interacted inappropriately with a 15-year-old female student. 15 years old. Additional parties and attendance were at the fact finding with a few people. Let's move in to see what the instance was. So, uh, on March 28th, 2018, the administration uh, was notified at a possibility of an inappropriate encounter between a staff member, Michael Smith, and the former center of a student. Right? A male student was uh, attending, was friends with this person, made the allegations following a verbal, heated verbal exchange between him and Mrs. Smith. According to, uh, to the male student, Mr. Smith has been has been messaging the female student in an attempt to quote unquote get on that. So this disgusting, nasty, pervert, creep, loser was trying to text a 15-year-old student in an attempt to get on that. This the male student shared a screenshot of his phone showing the text he sent asking if she still had the messages for Mr. Smith. After confirming she had the messages, the male student attempted to forward those messages to him, to which he refused. So the text exchange was between the male student occurred several days before the male student reported the matter to the attention of the staff at the Center for Alternative of Learning. Once informed of the uh, incident, the assistant principal Walker contacted, um, I guess, the victim's mother to inform her of the situation. Uh, during the, the conversation, Miss. Yeah, redacted. Acknowledge that Mrs. Smith had contacted her daughter in a way that she thought was inappropriate. Wow. Now I'm not sure of of this school, but usually alternative learning could be many things. Students struggling, having some issues. I, I that's usually what I see when when say alternative schools, but it may not be that. So I don't want to say say that. But but if that's true. You're trying to take advantage of people who are trying to figure out their way. Even or it doesn't matter, but he he is a predator. That's predatory behavior. They find kids that that are finding their way. Even though all children are, but they're trying to find their way. And this dude thought he had an opportunity. And most likely, with these kinds of predators, that wasn't his first time doing it. That was not his first time. He's probably done this many times before. He just got caught this time. Utterly disgusting. And he had a nerve to spin there screaming at Gonzalez. For what, bro? You need to, you need to be in jail, man. You shouldn't be out in the streets. Like, what are you doing? Absolutely disgusting. But we have to, we have to put this out here. 
Um, you know what? Let's put we could do a little bit more here. We'll, we'll we'll read the rest. We'll read the rest of this. Give me give me a second. I'm put. I'm trying to um, blow this up so you guys can read it because uh, if I've just put it on the regular uh, slide on on Streamyard, you guys weren't able to read this. So let's put this up real quick. I know we almost hitting two hours in. We still have a few more things to talk about. So I appreciate you guys for hanging out with me. Um, let's continue. So let's just. I'm gonna try to blow. Try to run through this. Um, so. Mr. Smith claimed that he explained the rationale for uh, the expulsion to the parent and student emphasizing that this was the only time he spoke to a student outside his normal duties. Who knows? Probably a lie. On more, on, on more than one occasion, he stated he had never had a conversation with the student outside the parameters of his positions of dean assistant. With, when asked if he interacted with a student via social media, Mr. Smith den denied talking to the student via phone or social media. When asked why the parent would state he messaged the student via Snapchat, Mr. Smith said that he had no idea and added that he did not have a Snapchat account. When asked again if he contacted the student via any social media outlet, like he's, they're trying to break it down to, the, to Mr. Dots guy. Did you contact her with any way using a phone with social media? Did you do it? And it says right here, Mr. Smith denied any contact with the student on any social media accounts. Mrs. Smith asked if he recalled was Mrs. Smith was asked if he recalled telling two administrators that he in fact had been in contact with a student ver via Snapchat to which he denied any such conversation. Mrs. Smith explained that the allegations were based on a negative relationship between him and the male student who brought the matter in attention of the administration. He's trying to throw the the boy, the the man, I will say uh, more of a man than this this Mr. Smith that saw this predator trying to prey on his friend and stand up to him. But, oh, it's, it's beef. What do you mean? Like, he photoshopped it? It doesn't make any sense. So from his perspective, Mr. Smith believes that the male student was attempting to get him fired because the student felt Mr. Smith was not uh, disciplined for allegedly calling the male student a derogatory name. Mr. Smith provided the disciplinary log entries for the male student in question and highlighted key log logs where the student was insubordinate towards staff and met threats to other staff. So he's, so he's He's trying to distract from him being a pervert to a, this child having some discipline issues as if that changes what he's been doing, hitting, hitting uh, this girl on Snapchat. So, so apparently th there were some issues where he was going back and forth with this student. But the problem is they have screenshots of the, the, the issue. So it didn't matter what he was doing or what him and this, this young this student was doing. But this shows what this predator was trying to do, trying to get away with this kind of crime. And obviously, it didn't work. It didn't work at all. I'm gonna, let me see. I'm going to show at the very end here of exactly how everything went down before we move on. Damn, what, what a ter terrible dude. But maybe, maybe we could, I'll break this whole thing down later. But Let's see. I'll put let me let me show you the very okay. So this is this is the end here throughout all of this. Um of yeah, you know, all the all the information, everything is the investigation was included. They they actually took the time to provide enough information to truly um take the situation seriously, listen to all the parties involved. And this is where their, their findings are. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna finish, we're gonna connect the dots here and show this real quick here. So, Mr. Smith, in the light of the evidence the administration has gathered, and based on your responses in our uh, fact-finding meeting, the Board of Education has upheld my recommendations for discipline. Our investigation has shown that you have conducted yourself in an inappropriate, unprofessional manner with several students on multiple occasions. As a result, you will be replaced on suspension without pay immediately until such time as the Board of Education may schedule and hold a, dis a dismissal hearing. So going back to the same thing, your actions have greatly distressed several students, affected their well-being, and disrupted the learning environment. I recommend your dismissal 
to the board based on the following charges, which we already read earlier. Lastly, you are advised to remain off district property and refrain from contacting district students and staff. You pervert. Get out of here. True clown, but he wanted to yell at Chris Gonzalez at a meeting. Way to go, Michael Smith. We have connected the dots. You're a pervert, and you need not be around any children. Like, that's the dots I'm connecting. And I'm interested if a lot of other people, fathers around children that know that you was there, now they kind of all know. Keep your kids away from this man. So you're going to hit him up on, on, on Snapchat. Fucking pervert. Um, let's look. <laughs> let's go. Uh, to see if I remember any other. Uh, oh, I think I got Christina. Appreciate you for the ten dollars super chat. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate. It. We, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep going. Appreciate you, um, Bushmaster with the nine 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 super chat. Uh, can you, Nate Deloy, uh, Shaw, Ann Burns, and Oshi Duke Jack to come together and go over this? Yeah, I, I, I think I'm gonna start emailing some other content creators. I think she has to come on this channel. It's, it's long overdue. Um, Burgundy Blue commentary. We're gonna try to figure figure out a way to all come together and uh, have a conversation about this. Um, it's you know very very soon. And uh, Bushmaster with another nine 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 super chat. Appreciate you. So we all been we kind of went through the two, and I didn't know it was going to take that long. But God damn, he sucked. He was a terrible person. I want to talk about another person that's extremely important. Extremely important. Um, Thank you, George, uh, for the 99 Super Chat. Let me read you it real quick. You should make a documentary of all this. Imagine being a parent to check your child's messages to only see this creep on your child's DMs. Gross. These people are all demonic. Seriously. They definitely got, there's definitely something wrong with them. Yeah, the connection is Satan. Like, connect that. Like, something's, something's wrong with this whole group of people. But this one is, I don't know if it's necessarily a goon, but someone who I consider... I mean, it's it's been a it's been categorized that this guy is running the entire show. So let me let me show you his face. I'm sure you you may have seen his his uh face in the in these meetings. Let me show you this man right here. Do you guys know who this man is? Let in the chat if you if you guys know who this man is and why he is so important. If you don't know who he is, he's the lawyer, Michael Delgado. He's the one that we all realized uh, through the special board meeting has racked up almost a million dollars in billables in attorney's fees. This man is making a whole lot of money. He is right there next to the super mayor in the last couple of meetings. Um, this time it looks like he's running a show. I don't know. I showed you guys the footage of the board meeting when Lacey tried to stop the meeting because um, Carol Wilson finessed and got, was able to speak, burned her talking about the situation with her daughter, Alexis Wilson, you still don't have the unedited unedited uh, police cam footage. We still don't have it. The only, the only thing that's been released is edited footage. Um, and I, I don't know who the person next to her, uh, I'm sorry, I don't have his name, but you know, he said, say her name. And Lacey was ready to stop the meeting. And it, and it was not the mayor, not the police chief, not it was the lawyer that said, shut the hell up. We're going to keep this meeting, you moron. We're going to stop the meeting because, because we're going to stop this meeting. When Carol Wilson speaks, do you know how bad that looks, you idiot? And he stopped that from going. So this guy is, is really powerful. He's a really powerful dude. And the question that I have, and I think at least many of us have, is why has the attorney general done anything? Why like all of all the things that's been going on, why has the attorney general done anything? And this is my theory that I've been talking talk to people about this. This guy, you know, this guy we're looking at right now may have something to do with it. So let me show you. It's going to take a little long, not long, but it's, you know, I have to explain a, a few things. So stay with me. But I think you guys will have a, a better understanding of why it seems like 
is Tiffany is, is, is Tiffany Hayard being protected? She's able to do all these things and embarrass herself. Like how nothing has happened yet. What what is who who's who's keeping her in power? Well, you know, you heard from Sherry. They've they've talked to anybody and everybody. Hey, we're we're we we don't know what's going on. We're kind of bleeding out here. We're spending you know, money's being spent stupidly on fireworks and and banners and pat and pamphlets. And they're going to they're going to Vegas. Who God knows what's happening in Vegas. They're going spending all this money. Um, she's picking and choosing who to enforce the laws. If you don't take if you don't get donate to her, you don't respect it. She finds ways to f you over. We need help, and nothing has happened. So it kind of questions like, okay, what what is going on here? So I'm going to show you this other person right here. You guys may not know who this person is, but don't worry. Everything is kind of connected here. Okay. So it looks like, you know, Doug Otto is probably the puppet master of, um, behind everything. He is good friends with this person, Chris Welsh. Do you know who Chris Welsh is? He is the Speaker of the House. So this article right here, and again, I'll try to put all this crap on uh, the description below, but they, they talk about a little bit of who this person is and his political history and all the stuff that he is, you know, rising up in, in the ranks. He is good friends with this, this individual. Very good friends. Now, he he was he he got on the job because basically he got it from another man that got arrested for let me see let me make sure i got this correct before i say it but he's you know many years rising up through through the ranks he's a speaker of the house him and dagallo is good friends we'll, i'll show you exactly how this all relates to tiffany here i just want to make sure i got this right so yeah chris wells got this job he got replaced by michael madigan I'm going to show you who Michael Madigan is because, again, all this does link together. And the reason why Chris Welsh got this job, let me show you. Oh, I, I thought I was showing the screen. Give me a second. So, yeah. But, so, showing real quick. This is this is what I'm talking about. Chris Welsh. He's the Speaker of the House. He got, it, he got this job from... This individual that got indicted on federal racketeering and bribery charges connected with alleged corruption schemes. His name was Michael J. Madigan. Okay. So this dude, and this, this indictment like outlined a 10 year, a decade long scheme allegedly led by this man who uses various powerful positions for personal financial gain and to benefit his political allies and associates. Don't worry. This all is going to make sense in the, in the middle, but in a little bit. But you know, this is this is politics, right? In Illinois, unfortunately, a lot of a uh, lot of nonsense going on. But he took the job from him. And the reason why I want to bring this up is, and hopefully I got that picture. Do I got that picture? Hold on a second. Hopefully I got that picture. Give me a second. This is a really interesting picture. I actually saw this on the Dalton um, political website or Dalton's uh, politics site so i want to have this picture ready um i got oh i got delete pictures now give me a second guys i got so many um pictures on Streamyard. they're like whoa you got too much you got too much images there's a lot it's a lot going on here so anyway yeah it was a, it was a 22 count indictment so this guy's been doing a lot of terrible things let me show you so welsh was basically handpicked to replace a mannequin. And I'm going to show you this picture right quick right here. Guess who um who defended Tiffany in that recall case that she went down with? That guy, that white guy right there was Mike Mannequin's attorney's attorney, attorney. That's Mike Mannequin's attorney. Same attorney that helped who helped Hanyard uh, beat the recall. Because remember, everyone keeps saying, recall it, recall it. They did. The problem is that everyone lost, the people lost because of technicality. This attorney was helpful with that. And that's Mike Manigan's attorney. So hopefully you guys are getting a little bit of the connections. Connect the dots here, right? 
So we're going back with the um the Gato right here. So let me just let me show you his picture again. So the Gato got Welsh his first election win for the school board uh, school board district. They have been helping each other ever since then. So Delgado wanted to 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 have that township position because he's a lawyer. He makes a lot of money, right? Chris Welsh's wife was the original attorney, original village attorney for the village. Okay? Tiffany brought them in when she won in May of 2021. So, let you know the connections here. His wife, Chris Welsh's wife, was the original village attorney. About a year later, um, this person had to run for judge. She got elected. She had to resign from that, that, that position. But you see how everything is just very, not saying incestuous, incestuous, not incestuous. The, the connections is very obvious, right? Of everyone that's connected to this thing. Now, let's, let's, get, let's get a little deeper here. So let me bring back let me bring back the other dude. Do I have a picture of his of this fool? Now I gotta go back on the website. Yeah, let's 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 share this tab right here and get this guy's face off here. Cool. So this guy right here, talking about his wife, was the was the original village attorney. She had to move on, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. So So Chris Welsh recommended Delgado to step in as the prosecuting attorney until his wife had to officially resign. And Delgado assumed both roles without the board voting. Okay? So basically, once he was able to get on to the village, he wanted a township. He wanted to make money from both. Right now, this is probably where he's making the most money. Now, the interesting thing about Chris Welsh is that him and Keith Freeman are good friends. Connect the dots. Welsh is the one that connected Keith to the job as administrator. If you all connect, yes, the dots. Welsh and Freeman are buddies. Remember, I don't know if you saw the five minutes of, of faith with Keith Freeman. He was saying someone was talking to him about he should come in and, and go back to public service, and he was. He wasn't sure about it this is this is where you're talking about that he was able to connect him to this job and also i damn i don't know if i got it but let me see if i can find it let me see if i can find this this uh i thought oh, i do have it all right let's 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 put this on here real quick here If you see that Welsh right there, you see that? Emmanuel Welsh donated $2,500. They donated to Tiffany's campaign. Right there. You can actually look that up as well. So it's all really all well connected here. Um, so this is where, again, this, this is all, it seems like it's connected to me. Or at least I think this is what's going on. Let's put this put back this 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 guy's face again. Delgado has a lot of connections in almost every courthouse in this state. And now this 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 trio of friends extend one step further. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Damn it, I keep running my quota on on pictures. There's a lot going on here. Give me a second. I wish they want to see the you two again. Um let me, let me put another another picture here. And thank you for your patience. Who's that, guys? Who's that? Who that? Who that? Anyone know? Uh, I'll wait. If you guys don't, who who who's that guy hanging out with uh, with uh, smiling Tiffany Hayard? Those are the dots and T. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Kwame. Kwame Raul. The Attorney General. The, uh, the Illinois Attorney 
general. So this is a, this is a theory. It's all a theory. But they look, they seem to be all really good friends. Really good friends. Why has Tiffany Hayard has been able to escape these the feds for as long as she has? Why there's there's apparently several cases, at least two, that, that could took her that could have took her down, and the AG ref, office refused. This goes extremely deep. Think about it. Of all the news, all the embarrassing things that's going on in, in his state with Tiffany Hayard, and he has no interest in investigating this. I, I talked about this a long time ago. I was, I was, it, it racked my brain. Why has anything happened yet? And it looks, yeah, I, 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 I have to agree. I have to agree. These people were desperate. What Sherry was talking about, they were trying to reach out to anybody that, that's willing to listen. This woman is too incompetent. She's doing too many wrong things. And Kwame Wawa was supposed to protect. He's an attorney general. Is he like second most powerful person in the state? I don't know how this works, but you tell me. And nothing's happened yet? To a point now that the, the feds have probably realized, all right, dude, we got to do something now. This is this is kind of too embarrassing. She was supposed to, all right, she's going to be corrupt. She shouldn't be so loud and stupid with it, right? Other people, it takes years to kind of figure out, okay, there's, there's some kind of chicanery going on. This, this shit goes deep. It goes extremely deep. I'm sure Lightfoot, but it, all right. And I and I hope and, and and people that I talk to have said that Lightfoot has made a difference because right off the bat, and they're not they don't believe this is a coincidence. The sec the day that she took that they elected, a, a, I guess yeah, elected her to investigate. The day later, Andrew Holmes' name is f officially revealed. That people in Tiffany's circle are panicking. That you got the creeper, the the groomer, screaming into a microphone like all this is happening because of lawyer life but just being there this is what the people on the ground are telling me but can but if the attorney general doesn't want to do anything how yeah just like what you said that she doesn't care maybe that's the reason why she walks around like she's invincible because she's hired and gave a million dollars to this man to continue to do what she wants to do. So this man is making a ton of money. Let me see if this is the if this is the, the the screenshot that shows a lot of what he's the amount of money he's made he's, he has made. Yeah. So um, many of the governmental matters Delgado has worked on throughout his career are directly related to real estate, including zoning, tax increment, financing economic development, and the use of permit, uh, permitting. According to his firm's website, Delgado's uh, firm provides counsel to towns, many towns. Look, look, all look, all these towns. I'm sure you guys who live here are familiar, right? The Better Government Association found that Delgado's firm was among the highest paid by Cook County towns, pulling in $14.8 million in five years between 2010 and 2025. Oh, 25. 2010 and 2015. Imagine the money he's pulling in now. The dude is making a lot of money. Dude killing it. And there's a lot of connections with him. With he's running, he's running everything. He's running the entire town. He don't care about the people. Obviously, he's a lawyer. You know, law, lawyers do what lawyers do, but that's just a theory. Who knows? But there's connections here. You know, a lot of stuff is documented. I, I wanted to know why the attorney general hasn't done anything. And it looks like that's 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 probably what happened. And I think eventually, I think eventually they realize that they can't they can't save Hanyard and they'll just throw her away. That's my theory. My theory is Hanyard is so bad at this, and she was so reckless with it and wants to do podcasts. Notice. 
Where's the second episode of the podcast? Actually, I'll check right now to see if there's a episode, if it's a podcast episode. But let's see. I, I doubt there is one. But I think eventually they probably said, "You, you goofball, you can't do any more podcast. It's over for that." Like, what are you talking about? So the last one was, yeah, the twentieth, uh, March twentieth. Nothing. So, again, that's just a theory. Anyone else here can they could probably say that's not true. Well, we don't know what you're talking about. But Illinois politics is extremely corrupt. And you know, it, it is it is crazy how deep this goes beyond just one mayor just being really terrible at her job and then she gets elected to be a supervisor at township, um, doing doing bad at that job. Uh, yes, that's a perfect way of saying it. She, she is it's it's like you're going rogue. Like again, everyone is doing a little bit of whatever. It's just she's been so bad, they can't continue to support this. And yeah, Michael Delgado will just keep collecting the money. And then if someone comes in and don't want him, he still has other places covering other stuff that probably have some shadiness going on. But again, this is all just a theory. But I tell you, um, the people that I talk to, he's a problem. And we're talking about Lightfoot. And I know a lot of people do not agree with it, especially the people who are on the outside looking in. It's like, you know, giving her $400 an hour. Um, but at least there's a cap at 30K. There's no cap for Delgado. The guy's already made um, $950,000. 900, 900, 950, $100,000. Like basically a million dollars they have given to this person. There is no cap. He's going to continue to make money. I don't know how much he's making per hour. Um, interesting enough that the the lawyer that um, New York City Mayor Eric Adams hired, and I, I looked at this. I'm gonna make a video about Eric Adams. He's been he's being investigated by the FBI, and I don't know anyone's talking about it. Not like I'm looking through some of the stuff. I mean, I guess yeah, obviously the, his his you know New York Post has a conservative newspaper, but you think a man has been investigated for months by the FBI, you think it'd be more news about it. There isn't. He's he hired a lawyer, and guess how much he's paying per hour. $2,000. I got the wrong job. I should have been a lawyer. $2,000 an hour. I mean, again, you're representing the New York City mayor, but $2,000 per hour. So be a lawyer, guys. Um, and be a good one. Like, don't, don't represent scumbags, but I'm just saying. I, but um, thank you for $2 Super Chat, dude. Uh, in the meantime, Dalton is going broke. We, yeah, we do not know the, the full extent of the damage. That's why, you know, Sherry said that they, they, they can't afford to keep her around an, another year. Who knows where she should start going crazy? I mean, she's already been crazy, but even going more crazy. Um, George with another 99 Super Chat. Appreciate you. This all makes me sad. Nothing will get done until you can continue to expose them like the cockroaches having the lights shown. You, what... You know what may be ousted the mayor is coming for revenge. Yeah. And and I, you know, the feds are the feds are investigating. It, it, it is happening. It is a slow thing. But I really it's disappointing. Remember the, the attorney general is talking about the 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 uh, the foundation she put in. He is not aggressive at all. Why? Who's telling him to slow down? Oh, don't don't do don't do anything, right? The real age, a real attorney general will went after this situation aggressively because it's it is a lot of evidence of some level of corruption. But just like when Lacey was trying to do, like again, it was terrible, but trying to, you know, hey, I said one more time, no clapping. Stop the meeting. The lawyer that got us said, shut the fuck up, chill, sit down. I run the show. You don't. Not even the mayor run this show. I run this town. So many people believe that he is the pup master. Again, it's all alleged. Um, but it looks like that's actually happening. So that's a bit of the, and it's more people. But I know we, we went two, damn near two hours. There's something else I wanted to check out. I wasn't able to check this out. But Jediah Brown, the one that just ethered everyone at the township meeting, he had, um, he had, Alive, and I have it. I didn't get a chance to check it out, and I want to know if I if I if I download it. I'm gonna have to put it on my YouTube, but I think did I download it? I may. 
Okay, actually, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna see if I can download. I want to watch it with you guys. If you guys are still with me, I know it's it's already a little late. Um, but he he contacted me, hit me up. He said, "I I need I want you to check out this 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 live I did." He has a lot of more information. Again, going deeper into this this rabbit hole of craziness. Um, oh, he has two videos. All right, let me see if I can find. Let's see. He he released one just recently. Let me watch this one. He was live an hour ago. This is this. I have no idea what he's going to talk about, but I I know he he probably going to put you know bring some some real information here. So I want to we're going to watch this together in real time and see what he has to say about uh, what's going on here with the super mayor and her, and her, her group. So let's, 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 let's keep it going. We're going to try we, I don't know if we're going to do as long as a uh, late night crew. Cause your homeboy, I don't know how he's able to do as long as he had like, more props to him. But we're gonna we're gonna try to do it. We're gonna try to stay a little little later. We're gonna see exactly what Jedi uh, was talking about, and this is a this is a hour ago. Night. And no, let's well speed up a little bit, guys. Hold on a second. Reporters over the YouTube content creators and such. There's going to be quite a bit of people who are going to be covering this incident. One of my favorites is Hannibal. Hannibal. Hey. Uh, I actually want to give a shout out to the late night crew with Shay. Hey. I want to give a shout hey. out to uh, Burgundy. These are individuals who are specifically committed to focusing on things going on in Dalton and Word. giving you all the facts as they come. Much so today we're going to be doing the exact same thing. My role is a little different because I am a advocate who is also doing an investigation and an inquiry with myself and a team uh, that does investigations. But tonight is going to be a different kind of night. And I want to just basically do a little bit of housekeeping before I get started with the with the tea. I want to thank the there's there is going Most to definitely. be another team that is going to be assisting me tonight in the things that we talk about. They're going to be in my ear. They're going to also uh, we've basically been in communication. This is officially a movement. It is a collaboration. More unsung heroes have joined the squad and this thing has expanded far beyond anything that has ever happened in the realm of getting information that I've ever experienced in any case in my entire life. Save this live, damn, I have class. Okay, so um, they are not visible, but they're here and they're on there. So I don't want my team to be getting all the credit. I want you all to know that there are a lot of people concerned about what's going on in Dalton and the effort is expanding okay uh, a couple more things I want you guys to know that you can help us out in this effort if you all are appreciative of what we're doing we're not just sharing information or talking about what people are doing we're boots on the ground we've got real investigators we're getting real information and we're disseminating it you can support our effort Valerie is going to put up in this chat hold on I don't even know if I could do that chat I don't even check I didn't even check that there she go she just did it. Give me a second, y'all. Hold on, hold on. Sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. I just saw she did it. Valerie just did it. Bam, 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 bam. It worked. Okay, so I just pinned up a way that you can actually support the work that we're doing and give us further resources to conclude and conduct to conduct and conclude this investigation, to organize more efforts to keep the pressure on the pipes until they bust and to bring the results that the people of justice. I want to interrupt so you guys can check out Jedi if you're interested. He is on Facebook. So he's not, I don't think he has a YouTube channel. So he's, this is a live on Facebook. So I know a lot of people are not interested in Facebook, but a lot of this information is on Facebook. So, you know, if you really want to follow the story, if you have like an old Facebook account, um, just type in Jedi, Jedi Brown, you'll see his picture. And he, he has like a, oh, about, not about almost a hundred thousand thousand followers there. So if you want to check it out right there and there, check out Jedi Brown on YouTube. I mean, the people of Dalton need and deserve. I literally said YouTube on Facebook. I, I am losing my mind. Sorry. Now, normally, 
I'm rapid fire, right? I'm just giving you guys and saying it as it's in my heart and from my passion. But right now, because of the type of things we're going to talk about, I have a lot of stuff in front of me. So bear with me, uh, just so that I can make sure uh, you guys, I'm, I'm talking to you, I'm talking about people in my earpiece. You can hear me, right? We, you, you still on it? Okay, just making sure you're there. So we're good. Their team is there. I got, hold on one second. Let me make sure that the chats, I can see the chats. I don't see the chats right now. No, that ain't gonna work. Okay. So I think I'm gonna have to put the chats on this screen over here. Lord have mercy. Okay, my messenger has to update. We should have did this before. I did it, but I want to thank all of the people who also saw my um, my last video and decided to contribute to the cause so that we can further um, get this information and do our job. All right. Whew. I don't even know where to start. This is kind of hard. <laughs> Hope y'all are doing well. The tea is ready. Give me one more second so I can open up my chat. I want to make sure that I can see my team. What? I'm sorry, give me a second. Oh, that worked. Bam. All right. I can see my team. I can see, I can hear this team. We're ready. Let's do it. Hold on one second. And I'm also going to be giving you guys some visuals. Um, and the first one is this one. I wore this shirt specifically for this live. And depending on who you are, I wore this shirt for everybody. And if you're somebody who was rocking with us in our fight, this shirt simply says, you matter. Don't give up. Okay? But if you're not rocking with us, this shirt says, you don't matter. Give up. <laughs> Depends on who you are. That's how I want you to read it. Now let's get into the tea bag. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Did you just laugh in my ear? I heard you. Did I do? Was that, was that good? Okay, so basically, oh, I got a few more things to talk about. And again, y'all, you can talk to me in my ear. I don't think I'm going to be that distracted. But if I am, I'm going to tell y'all I am. Okay, so listen to me. I want you all to get this. This is not something that I think is a joke, but I am going to be myself, and I may be very comical in trying to do this. We have tons of allizations. Um, I really think that they need to rewrite that word in the, in the dictionary. That shit hits so much better and harder. So we have tons of allizations, and that is exactly what these are. We're giving the facts as we have found them. And so uh, I'm not the media. I can give out this information as we have found them. But these are allizations. So I'm giving these allizations for so several reasons. It gives you guys an indication of what's going on according to what we found. It gives you an, a hint of the information that we're cooperating and turning over to authorities. It also gives you guys something to do. I've understood that so many people are burning food and not getting their hair done, showing up late for work, staying up late because y'all want the tea. So we're giving you this information so that you can do your research and also so that you all will be able to answer the call with confidence when we tell you guys what we're doing as it relates to organizing. All right. So now let's get into it. I'm not stalking anybody. I'm not playing with nobody. We're just simply advocates giving the truth to the people as we understand. It. OK, so the first thing that I want to talk to you all about, and I'm going to kind of jump around here just a little bit. And I don't know if I want to start with some heavy stuff or some surface stuff, but I just want to let you guys know everybody can get it. And so I don't know what y'all think we should start. I'm talking to, to the people in my ear. What y'all think we should start? And what part? You know, we're all waiting, right? Yeah. So I don't want to Oh, no, around. that's we're still fact checking that. We're still fact checking that. So I, I may I may skip I may skip it a little bit. Well, 
But this is what I will definitely say. Oh, that's you want to start that heavy? God damn. Uh, oh, well, no. look, this is what I want y'all to understand. We basically want Tiffany to stop throwing temper tantrums. And I said this in the last live and I said before, girl, every time you in them rooms cussing people out, slamming desk and throwing shit, we are hearing everything you're saying. And I said it on the last live, y'all don't know how to debug. I'm like a bed bug. I ain't going away. I'm listening to you talking and screaming and yelling. And guess what? We see how you feel. You ain't feeling good. And we think, as we said before, the best thing that you could do is to go ahead and take a step aside and take a nap before you're incarcerated for your crimes. But don't no reason to raise your blood pressure because, you know, as a black African-American woman, blood pressure is a problem. So don't be in there screaming and throwing shit because you had a chance to make this all nice and kosher. You didn't take it. And let's also talk about that. Yeah. For example, we started this thing, if y'all don't remember, basically asking for her to respond to the how she handled the allegations of sexual assault of a former employee. Basically, we were not even gonna go down this road. We just wanted her to basically separate herself from uh, 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 trustee Andrew Holmes. And then guess what? I would have been gone. But what she didn't do is the right thing. And so she tried to play the game that got us to where we are. And so what we're going to do, who we, we're gonna just start with a little bit about Kamal. We all know that Kamal, uh, makes a hundred thousand dollars a year. I'm not going to give Kamal foul out right now, but I'm going to give you guys a little bit of peak snippet of what some of the things that we talked about. But I talked about this. I mean, that we're working on. But I talked about this in the live, live last live, and I want to clarify something for people to understand. In the last live, I talked about her boyfriend Kamal Woods obtaining a building for ten dollars and then selling it for two hundred thousand dollars. Well, we had to get a double fact check. And what I want you all to know is yes, Kamal Woods did get a building for $10 that was ultimately sold for $200,000, but that $10 was so that he can hold his intent to buy the property. But what happened is when they went to go do the closing, Kamal Wood had a mechanics lien that was against his car wash that when you have a mechanics lien, meaning you didn't pay some people that did some work for you at another property, he shouldn't have been able to close on the next property that now we understand he actually paid eighty thousand dollars for. Yeah, I believe I believe we talked about this. It, it was a really great flip, right? He was a, he was able to pay this amount and then and sold it very. I don't think he. It was like five years later, kind of like now how everything is inflated. It was very soon. He was able to buy it and get a really nice return. I think we talked about it before. I heard you. What were you saying? So he paid $80,000 for that property, allegedly. But if that was you and my black ass, if we had a lien against us, we would have never been able to get anything closed. So that points to corruption. And what we're trying to get to the bottom of it is who in the Democrat Party party of people would allow Kamal to surpass the law that everybody else is held accountable to. Can you take him in there, please? Because that screaming is really getting me off track. Okay, but until then, can we just take him out? Okay, so 80,000, uh, so he sold the building for $200,000. I am, I don't have the clip. Give me one second. I'm going to try to see if I can find it real quick. Real quick, if I could find this clip, because I'm going to show y'all something that I oh, think definitely. is interesting. Can somebody find me? Hold on one second. We're going to take our time today, too, y'all. So don't rush me. All right, talk your shit. This is what I'm saying, because we're going to take our time. I need somebody to find me the timestamp of this. There was a video of Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard cutting the ribbon for this building. They cut the ribbon for this building and there is a video of it and that's what made us aware or had us going down this track. Let me see if I can find it really quickly. Do you all have that by chance? Do you know what that said? You don't, okay. All right, they don't. Well, everybody's trying to find it. I'll come back, hopefully, with that image before we get off of this live. But I'm, huh?
Absolutely. And so we're going to try to get that image because I have never seen in the history of my lifetime a mayor showing up as a mayor for their own ribbon cut. God damn, she narcissistic. <laughs> <laughs> She showed up and had an official ribbon cutting for her shit <laughs> with her man. And so we want to get that image because I think that that is a golden image. And I think you all deserve to see it if you ain't seen it already. But if y'all don't, if y'all don't think that that's bad, and this is why we need good government, Kamal has enjoyed a very wonderful, wonderful business life in Dalton because he has not paid a water bill and he has not paid taxes. Oh, Terrible, shit. all of this stuff is researchable. But while y'all paying estimated water bills that's going through the mother and roof and barely through the pipes to give y'all the ability to wash y'all bodies, Kamal Woods can use all the money, the water he wants. He ain't got to pay a dime. So that in itself is a culture of corruption. I can hear you talking. You can talk. And that's why we don't allow for bad government because people abuse their power. Everybody deserves a break on their water bill then. If Kamal can get it, you should get it. You get a water break, tax break. You get a water a water bill break. You get a water bill break. Boy, I wish I was Oprah. I'll give it to you, but I ain't. Pay your bill, because she will cut your water off. All right. So, no surprise one of the so things far. that we think is very interesting is that we found out that there, there were some YouTubers who did some videos and they did an amazing job. So I don't have to go over that again because I don't really be looking at people's stuff. It was sent to me. I didn't look at it in great detail, but they did a great job and Kamal Wood shut down his building. I'm going to show you all about property in Dalton that Kamal Wood has a part or a stake in, partnership in. They taking property, getting property, selling property, not paying the, the bill of it, but that's just one example. But we'll talk about the specifics of that in the, in the, in the Kamal Woods report. But one of the things that I found to be particularly interesting is that if y'all have, if y'all, is that this is an allization now, this is an allization. I'm alleging, based upon what we found, that there's a possibility that they've allowed cars to go through that car wash to be scrubbed. And I ain't talking about because they dirty with dirt off of the streets, but cars have been taken to that car wash and they've been scrubbed so that they can be sold to other people. And that's why we have expanded mm -hmm. our investigation into, um, into this towing company. There are two tow companies that are operating in Dalton, Illinois. I, I'm, a, I'm sorry to interrupt. I know because he is taking a little long to break it down. There was someone that's connected to Hanger's team and I was talking to someone and I forgot their name, but Homeboy had stolen cars all over the place um there was a there was a situation where i forgot the person's name maybe someone in chat will have his name where he, he crashed the car he called i guess try to call i guess emergency but he told emergency no problem i'm, I'm getting the car told problem because the car he was driving was stolen and he wanted to get rid of the car i forgot the guy's name Damn it. I hope if someone in the chat can throw that name as someone that's connected to a lot of hot cars in the area and is connected to Tiffany Hayard. I totally forgot the person's name. Um, but yeah, some serious allegations there. And so if you've gotten your car towed in, in Dalton, Illinois. Can you give me those names? I don't remember those names off the top. Does anybody know? Damn, what's the name? Say it again. JTS Towing and West Services, because that's what the white lady said to me over the day. Well, white lady, I did a little research and I figured out who you are. Ain't you the way, aren't you like somebody's wife? The woman who answered the phone was the wife of the man who bought West, West Towing when they renamed it West Services. West Towing used to be owned by a man named Byron, somebody help me out, Brian Booker. Brian Booker used to own West Towing. Foul bankruptcy a lot of times. He sold that motherfucker. But at the end of the day, it's something about Mr. Booker. And we follow in the bread crumbs, crumbs and the money because mm -hmm. for some reason, Tiffany does not want to upset Mr. Brian Booker. But West Towing, literally based on our research, has gotten an increase in towing. And the, what's the other one? JTS towing has gotten a decrease in towing. Now let's talk about why we think that that is important. 
Let me tell you why we think that's important. So when you do the research, you will find out that that JTS towing, they pay an administration fee to the village of Dalton. Y'all, they literally, every time they take y'all shit. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was just funny to me. Every time they take y'all shit, they give money back to the community, back to the administration, back to the village. Now, if we can get some records, we can find out what exactly they're doing with that money that's coming back from JTS Towing. And it just pains my heart because JTS Towing is not even black owned. This is the towing company of white people. But what's crazy to me is West Towing don't give y'all shit but hard times. They take y'all shit and they don't give y'all no money back. But the reason why we thought that this was particularly interesting is because we have found that most of the cars that are being stolen from you, the people, are being stolen by West Towing. JTS Towing does things by the by the book. When your car is towed, there is a certified letter that must be sent out to you and to the lien holder if you have one. It's certified. That comes back. There is a waiting period. And when that waiting period is happening, there must be the signature of the police chief of the municipality that took your shit. Am I right? I'm right. That municipality has to sign off if you have overextended that period in waiting. And if you don't come get your busted lemon ass vehicle or your nice new shiny car, they then can take ownership of that car. They can go through a process of getting that title or that deed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But what has happened in the city of Dalton is it seems that there's some illegal stuff that may possibly be going on. For example, there are some tolls that have been released by West Services or West Towing, I allege, I allege. They, they don't even get the signature of the chief. Officers are not supposed to sign that, but I have some proof that there's some signatures on there that are not from the chief, and y'all ain't going through the whole process. Wow. Y'all better send them certified letters because guess what? You can't doctor too much shit up. However, as I said so many times, I reiterated today that one of those wonderful coveted vehicles are now being driven by the chief of Dalton Police, Chief Lacey. Chief Lacey is driving one of those cars that was taken back from y'all. A Dodge Durango SRT mm. with police plates on that motherfucker. Now imagine, imagine seeing somebody pull you over or speed by you with their lights and sirens on to get to work because and, and they in your shit. <laughs> But they got it legally. And so basically, we so damn good at the research. I just want to tell y'all that the three cars y'all waiting to get now, y'all better leave that shit alone. Because I told I'm telling the feds. How did they think that they were able to, to continue to do that? And and shout out to the individual investor. Um, please check out his 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 uh video on this. But how can a group of people be this blatant? That no one will take the time to research this. And again, it goes back to what we were talking about before. If the AG is on your is on your side, you think you can do whatever you want to do. You're taking cars and washing them over and, and, you, and you're changing. And you got you got the police chief, in turn, police chief driving around in a nice uh, Dodge. Like, what is going on in there? Oh, yeah, I'm I'm snitch. I'm motherfucking snitch. Absolutely. And guess what? That Tesla, that Tesla nice. But y'all better leave that motherfucker in that yard and do that paperwork the right way. I don't got a Tesla. You don't get a Tesla. <laughs> I had one, but fuck all them battery charges. Anybody got time to sit down 41 minutes with people trying to take your life? <laughs> right, don't. Anyway, moving on. One of the things that I found to be particularly interesting and that we talked about in the video earlier is that I'm not saying that this man had a, uh, a an insurance policy against this man because I don't know yet. We're still doing the research on this. But Chief Lacey, uh, very interestingly enough, Chief Lacey received one hundred thousand dollars after the man of the man who was married to his mistress. I already told you all this, but I'm putting it in this video so you can do your research. Go back to his video when he was not, when he was 
uh, uh, sworn in as chief of police. When he was sworn in as chief of police, there was a Mexican lady there. And it wasn't because, and I don't care if y'all think I'm stereotyping or if y'all mad, that she was trying to get a vendor, a vendor agreement to sell elotes and enchiladas. She was there supporting her boo. And her boo happened to be Chief Lacey. And so Chief Lacey was there with this woman who he was having an affair with because she was cheating on her husband, who, in interestingly enough, mysteriously just died in his driveway. What the hell is happening? What? Is this real? Like, yo, is this real? Like, this is this? This can't. Like, if someone sent a script to, and, and had one-eighth of this information, they would say, no, this is not believable. No one's going to watch this because it doesn't, it's not a believable story. What the hell? This is crazy. This is crazy. And then he dies, and he got $100,000. Now, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. They say something about the shoe size, tell you about the size of the pin. But I'll give you this. I thought that but, uh, Chief Lacey's shoes was rather small. So I don't know if she digmatized and gave him $100,000, but I do find it strange. And I'm not making an alleg allegation, right, an allegation right there. I'm just trying my best to connect the D-O-T-T-S, the dots. Okay. So... It's, pretty, it's just really interesting. So this is what I'm trying to understand, though. So when we did a little bit of more, when we did more digging into Chief Lacey and his behavior, I'm not going to put out Chief Lacey's file just yet because we got things to do. At, we'll do that at a later time. But there is a man by the name of Melvin Jones. Melvin Jones is Lacey's former partner. Melvin Jones went to jail for drug trafficking this is what i'm saying get real close to your television to your screen melvin jones is the former police chief's partner that went to jail went to jail for drug trafficking now speculatory testimony of some of the people we've interviewed and that we've gotten information from suggests that he went down for chief lacy so we thought that that was a very interesting piece of information. Why? Mm. Because in our official inquiry into what's going on in Dalton, we have also uncovered, and this is an allization, an allization, but we have uncovered a drug ring where there is vehicles that are of official capacity, like police cars driving around drugs in the community, a police station that's housing drugs. Y'all better get that shit up out of there. <laughs> Too late, too late, too late. They got drugs being housed inside of the police department, driving them around in police cars, and specifically, so y'all know that the motherfucker ain't playing in line, and firehouse number two, you all know with that about that ESDA building, that is also where people pick up their drugs, I guess, in this uh, wonderful scheme of things. Anybody know anything about that? What? I got I to gotta slow down for a second. Thank you for the $2 super chat. Yeah, here we go. What? So. <laughs> what? Yo, yeah, come on. I, I don't. I, I, I have I have no. I'm I have no speech. I'm speechless. I don't. Understand. Like, this is outrageous. What is going on? And I, I thought I, I did say I thought there's no way this su can surprise me. No, it, it surprised me. This is beyond. Wow, I, I get I, I, I'm I'm out of words. Yeah, my my head. Uh, yeah, you know what? Let's just continue. I don't know what's going on. We were trying to, because I wanted to know, wait a minute, why are there street people getting involved with this bullshit? Like, is it really that serious? But now I'm starting to understand. There is an alleged drug operation that we have been able to uncover and them alphabet people, I'm not talking about the LGBTQ letters, I'm talking about them other letters. Them people, ooh -wee. I ain't talking about them gay people. I'm talking about them other alphabets, the three alphabets, the most scary alphabets. Now, them LGBTQ alphabets is kind of scary, too, 
but them them other alphabets are scary as hell. And so basically, you guys listen to me. This is coming straight from Jedediah. We we're, we're going and digging deeper into this operation because if there's if that's the case, then Melvin, your dumb ass went to jail for nothing. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to call you a dumbass. It just kind of flowed out my tongue like that. But these are some of the information that they didn't want me to talk about. And I guess that's why they're still trying to figure out how to set me the fuck up. Ain't gonna work. Uh, real quick, Adele Rio with a uh, 199 Super Chat. Appreciate you. Yo, Giggity, she's literally trying, she's really following the movie. And the problem is, I don't know if she, she stuck around to watch the end of New Jack City. Out, or the ending of Training Day, or any of those classic movies that I enjoy, and I like watching them because they're fictional. But there's the cops running the drugs, and then a lot of mysterious deaths are happening. What, yo, WTF? Like for real? Like this is crazy. Thank you, John Luna. I know. Hopefully, you get some sleep, man, because I, I will keep playing it. But I appreciate you coming through as always. Huge support of the channel. Uh, much love to you. Hopefully, you have a nice uh, rest. What the hell? And so, look, this is crazy because the former partner goes to jail for drug trafficking. We are now alleging that there is a drug operation that is going on inside of Dalton that includes the use of official vehicles and official buildings. We don't know how many of the personnel is involved in this grand scheme of selling drugs and, and wiping cars clean. But something that we also found to be particularly interesting is that Lacey also had another partner named Paul. Paul and Lacey was fucking on the same girl. I told y'all it was a cesspool, allegedly. So there's this woman that they both were sleeping on. Paul was a part of uh, Tiffany Henyard's detail. He was a part or is a part. I'm not sure. We still, I don't know. Do we know anything about that? Is he, is Paul still on the detail? Anybody? Yeah, maybe. Wow. Hello? Yo, this, there's so much dots being connected. I can't keep up. There's so many allegations. Paul quit. Allegedly. So Paul quit the job, but he was also on Tiffany Henyard's detail. Him and Lacey was ramming the same woman. This woman showed up at the Kingdom Hall where Lacey worshipped, and they're not as forgiven as us, as us Christians. They banned Chief Lacey they excommunicated Chief Lacey from Kingdom Hall. Man, you ain't even going to be able to be with the 144,000, the few who actually going to get to heaven. You got to stay here in hell with me. That's fucked up. Is that what that mean? Fact check. Does that mean that he got to stay here or he just can't go to church? Jeez, these dots are connecting OD right now. Uh oh, I think you guys, we got our first video. Where is the video? Who has it? What is going on? Oh, that sucks. Okay. Is... Well, give me a second. Let me see if I can access that because I'm having technical difficulties over here with that process. But give me a second. You guys, it has been told to me that we have the ribbon cutting. Give me one second. I want to try to see if I can pull the ribbon cutting up and show it right here on the screen. With yeah. you guys, on I think his live. tactics are a little bit more it. outside of the realm. I don't realm, see the, you know. don't see the ribbon cutting. Give me a second. I'll try it on another device. Y'all good so far? Y'all good so far? Yeah, I didn't get it. You guys just can you resend that for me, please? It's just a little okay. A we're gonna be going getting on. you guys the ribbon cutter. They found that hole. <laughs> They found that motherfucker, and we're going to be showing you guys ribbon cutting in just a little bit. Give me a moment. Is this it? Is this it? Is this it? Of what I'm saying, because you know, I'm this I'll be lying. Ain't no lies over here. Okay. We're waiting for it. <sighs> I'm going to skip a little bit so we're not. Okay. So this there is the video, but I don't see the ribbon cutting part. I just see her talking about it. Can you explain what I'm looking at right there? Give me a second, y'all. I'll be right back. Boy. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna okay, Lacey ain't getting into heaven. Okay, he ain't one of the 144,000 elders. He lost his seat. 
Y'all out here fucking, and these people ain't playing because they trying to fall in love. They want some of the money. Okay, so we were talking about Lacey. We talked to y'all about the car. We talked about the partner going to jail. I did not say that Lacey was involved in this drug ring, but I mean, why wouldn't he be? I don't know. So I'm not even going to speculate because I don't have the specifics on who all the players are just yet, but we have given over all of the evidence that we have to the proper people. We'll let them do that. I'm just giving you guys an indication of some of the stuff that's going on. Now, if y'all on here, it's 996 people on here. Share this damn live and let's get this thing out to the whole damn country. And I need y'all to know that we're not playing. We're kicking ass. We're going to do this every single day. And you all need to support the work. You can contribute one of them ways that we just put down there. This is better than anything that y'all see going on in the way y'all cannot. Don't be mad. Now, I ain't asking for no five, four, five, six, seven hundred dollars an hour like these lawyers. But y'all can help us and resource this work because we got a lot to do and a lot more to uncover. OK. And so with that being said, uh, one second, one second, one second. OK, that's that's. OK, that's enough that I want to reveal in this report. I'm going to save the rest of it for later. But one of the things that I did tell y'all is that did y'all even know that Lacey didn't eat late, that, that Tiffany didn't fuck with Lacey at first? I'm saying some of these things in repeat so it could be in this nice video. She didn't even like this man. She literally used to call him out of his name. Do y'all have some of those things that she used to call him? And we quote. Mm, what, what did she say? Uh, OK. Punk ass motherfucker. What else? <laughs> Bitch. What else? <laughs> okay, well, we'll leave the rest of these for the official Lacey report. <laughs> what? Who likes Lacey? Who does like him? <laughs> Punk ass motherfucker. Like, what? Bitch. And, and he fights so hard. When he's around her but when he's by himself it he's still terrible but he gets like another level of being a dick when he's trying to impress this person who don't like she don't even like him but she can control him but <laughs> well, we got punk ass motherfucker and bitch end quote she did not always favor lacy and Lacey was actually looking to get away from the department before he was promoted as deputy chief. It is my understanding that Chief Lacey didn't qualify to become a chief because he didn't pass the exam to have the position that he got. Is that correct? All right, y'all. I feel like a news reporter, like a motherfucker. Normally, like I said, I come on here rapid fire. It's so great having all these. I got I got teams over here like this shit is lit. Okay, this is lit like a motherfucker. Let me stop cussing. Yeah. <laughs> Melvin Jones said, come on. Valerie Stubbs, will you come on and talk to me? Because it looks like you popped up in the comments and my people feel like you got something to say. Val her name is Valerie Stubbs. That's the sheriff, right? That's the former trustee. Valerie, welcome, baby. I love you. 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 Valerie Stubbs, one of my bosses. And what I mean, well, let me tell you what I said about boss. She organizing. She moving. She's a resident in Dalton. I work for the residents of Dalton. That's one of my bosses. Okay, so if Valerie wants to come on, you can come on. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll table Paul. Huh? This is crazy. Hit them. How? Which part? Okay, yeah, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So, yes, y'all, I am alleging that there is a potential drug ring going on there. And I think it's strange that they cutting and shutting down uh, uh, a gentleman saying that he was holding an illegal club because, y'all, everybody there, that's that's the freak Nick. Dalton is the freak Nick. And I don't want to do this, but I should tell you all about who freaking who. But I do know for a fact that if y'all give me a moment on one of the reports of somebody, there's going to be a sad nigga that's going to talk to us about 
his nigga, but we're not gonna put that report out just yet because I can't give. I'm not gonna give it all at one time. But I'm pretty sure we didn't piss them off real good so far. Give me one second. I want to talk to you all now about. Uh, let's pick a pick a nigga. Let's pick a nigga. Y'all know as I said in Dalton, they giving dick and dollars, dick and dollars, dick and dollars in Dalton, and we're gonna go to. I want to go to Keith Freeman. Huh? I want to go to Keith Freeman. He said he didn't call me a bitch. I reviewed the tape. He didn't call me a bitch, but I still feel like he called me a bitch. And that's enough for me. And I feel like he said something about my mama. Why when I left this meeting with this man called the mayors of the surrounding village and tell on me and tell on the people who was there supporting me what they was going to get a whooping? You sound dumb as hell. So anyway, Keith Freeman. The reason why I wanted to talk about Keith Freeman in this particular video is because I'm putting out a little weight so you guys can understand how heavy some of the information is that I've been holding in my heart and some of the information that we're confirming and dissecting. But the things that I'm giving you all today, we have had fact checkers go over and over and over again. Even while I'm talking now, I got fact checker checkers who are going to tell me if I'm doing something incorrectly. Can y'all still hear me? But Keith Freeman, old ugly ass, uh, he... Not needed, but we can confirm that very easily. He really is not needed. Uh, and he is about six feet. And he let my little bitty ass turn my back on him when I called him by his name after he disrespected me. That is a that is not alleged. We got the tapes for that. I would have punched him. If I was Keith and I was Jedediah and, and he was Jedediah, I would have punched him in the back of his goddamn neck and I would have took that ass whooping that he probably would have unleashed. But he ain't do that. So we'll deal with that a little bit later. But one of the things that I want to tell you all about Keith Freeman, because this man is an advisor and he is a financial man for the township and some parts of the village. But what I find to be very interesting for me is that Keith Freeman literally has filed bankruptcy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Keith Freeman can't even manage his own money. He got a Maserati repossessed. Damn! Did you say something? That's too many times. That's too many bankruptcies. That's really... And he, he's finessing all of this. I mean, it's a way to get him out of the situation. But seven bankruptcies, he should not be the village administrator. That's pretty obvious at this point. But seven, you're finessing, you're doing the shadiness too much. It's too obvious. Hello? Did I lose? I think I lost. Did I lose my? God. Okay, you there? Oh, it's almost. Bring a everybody on. Bring the other. Is the other people on here yet? I want all the team members. I know. Huh? <clears throat> They are, all right, we, our team is expanding. We're going to be bringing in another part of the team so that we can expand the information. And my team, has y'all said anything to me? Give me one second, because I have not been looking over here. No. No, y'all have not been saying anything. So we're going to continue to go forward with this. So look, one of the things about Freeman that I found interesting is he filed bankruptcy that many times. This man is not good with handling funds. But y'all, look at this. In an attempt to have some of their dirty deeds, and this man, I literally have this entire bankruptcy report that he just filed recently. This man just filed bankruptcy again. Let me give y'all the exact date. He just filed bankruptcy again. One second, because I want to tell y'all this because I think it's funny as hell. I lost my notes, but I think it was January something 2024. He just filed bankruptcy. But I basically started with monitoring and looking at this situation. And y'all look at this. This is so interesting to basically. me because I've never seen this in the history of my life. Chapter 7 and 11. God damn. But this is the thing about Keith Freeman that I found to be interesting. Do you all know Jeracy Law? Jeracy Law, right there is the document, Jeracy Law. I wish that I could have, I wish that I can get y'all some better stuff. But that goes Jeracy Law. What was prepared by Jeracy Law? What was prepared by Jeracy Law and it was granted by the Honorable Donald Castling, the Honorable Donald Castling, 
withdrew. What? That's like you go to one of them car dealerships and they say, we don't give a damn about credit. Good credit, bad credit, no credit. You can get a car. That's what Geraci Law is when it comes to bankruptcy. Do you all hear me? Hmm. When did this happen that they did this petition? Does anybody know that I just showed? Because I can't read it right now. My memory is failing me. This is outrageous. He's just reconstructing his businesses. <laughs> I got it. So this is you guys right here. This is what they filed. This is an order to withdraw. Geraci Law said, oh, hell no. Geraci Law saw that Keith Freeman had lied in his bankruptcy. Geraci Law group motioned the court literally when did this happen this just happened on 4 10 24 4 10 24 4 10 24 4 10 24 4 10 24 4 10 24 4 24 said hell no i'm not going down with y'all i saw y'all on jedi live now he didn't say that but what he did say to the court is he, that, that they withdraw from his case. Yeah. He now don't even have a lawyer and ain't nobody fucking with him. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Geraci Law said, no, 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 no. We ain't going to be in this mess. And so he tried to file bankruptcy right now. He lost his lawyer. Freeman, your move. Freeman is screwed. He's screwed for many reasons. I think this law this law firm was accurate, and they know. They just go on YouTube or turn on the TV. Why would you represent this guy with all the problems that's going on? I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. Did you all hear that? You know, I gotta stop this because. Um, and and check out Dela's channel. She has been saying that for a while, and I didn't necessarily understand it because I thought, well, maybe they're drug addicts because they act they act so stupid. Like they they do so much erratic things. But there's people who's been saying this for a while. So I definitely want to give a, a little special shout out to um Dela and her channel uh in the breakdowns. She has mentioned this for months, at least as far as I've been checking out her channel, and I didn't necessarily understand, but if this is true with all the drug rings and the cops involved and politicians involved, they're stealing cars, they're, they're trying to wash all this money. It And also the way they're behaving it looks like this is actually like legit. That there is some crazy amount of problem. Like, and she's been saying this for, for, for quite a while. So I just wanted to point that out and uh, give her some, some flowers on being ahead of this. It, the, Past me, I just didn't understand it, but it's all coming together now. Have y'all ever had what you say? <laughs> this is what's crazy, though. If you all have ever known a uh, file bankruptcy, your lawyer typically will have you do an electronic signature, or they'll sign for you on your behalf. Why they ain't sign none of the sixty-three documents in front of me? They made that motherfucker come and sign that shit itself because they knew he was lying. And they said, uh-uh, the news is looking into your shit. You lying, you misrepresenting, you trying to erase $174,000 worth of debt. You first ain't got no wife, then you got a wife. You're lying about how much you get paid, $93,000. You ain't adding all the money you stealing from Thornton Thorn Township credit cards. Ooh. But we'll save some of that for the Key Freeman file. Wow. One of the things that we're going to talk about in the Keith Freeman file, y'all, is his consistent infidelity. To the wife of Keith Freeman, my heart goes out to you. Because oh, you're going no. to find out some things that I'm going to share to you that no woman is going to want to find out about her man. Oh, no. There we this go. This is what I like to urge you to do. Get your divorce attorney. Have him on deck. Oh, boy. Because if he called me a bitch for real, even though he didn't, and I overacted because I thought he did, but I still feel like he did, but I do know he's being corrupt. I'm going to push that button. So this is some of the information. Is it good? Is it helpful? Do y'all appreciate it? Y'all still think I'm bullshitting? 
I don't think so. Oh think man, what happened? What happened? <laughs> Who else you want to talk about? Who? Not y'all want. They want. They want this Kamal foul. I'm, I can't push the golden buzzer just yet. Can't push the golden buzzer just yet. Okay. And real quick, it's been reported to me that Keith Freeman and Kamal do not like each other. So it is interesting that they were hanging out at the township meeting. They don't like each other. Um, probably for the most part, when you think about it, those two men were essential in just being around Tiffany Hayward. Obviously, Kamal is the boyfriend. Keith is the administrator. And it's probably some kind of power struggle. As far as I know, I'm not going as deep as what he just said. Oh, uh, what's going on? As far as, but they talk shit about each other um, when another person's not around. I have, I've, I've heard uh, sources that they do not like each other, which makes sense. This this woman is running everything. You want to make sure that you have her con- under control because you know Hanya don't seem like this, you know, the brightest bulb and 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 you know the, around that they would fight over power of her and her decisions and stuff like that. But I've heard that Keith and Kamal they don't fight in person. They none of them fight in person, but they talk each um a lot of shit behind each other or behind each other's backs. Okay. So we talked about uh, something that I forgot to give you guys, that the firehouse number two was previously closed for mold. It was previously closed for mold. I need a picture of the ESDA guy real quick. Can somebody get that for me? Can somebody give me the picture of the ESDA guy? My investigation has now expanded into this guy who was over the ESDA. The ESDA guy, y'all, never mind. My team over here said they got it. We don't need it. My, my, huh? Yeah, but we do have this image. Can you guys please put it up for me? Huh? What'd you say? Okay. So I'm gonna just take this camera off for one second. I'm gonna go closer. We're gonna pan over here. And then this is the ESDA guy. This gentleman is the ESDA guy. What is his name? Tell me again. Somebody tell me his name. Okay, this guy's name is Devante Stewart. Devante Stewart. Ooh, wee! Huh. Look at them JC Penny three, them JC Penny three thousand. Okay, this is Devante Stewart. I told Devante Stewart to his face, and I'm telling you online. My investigation has expanded into you. You were so goofy that when they went to the trip to what Springfield. You was told to go sweep the room for bugs. They flew you down. Huh? Okay, fact checkers are telling me I was wrong. That was New York. You went to New York to go sweep the room for bugs. And then when you got done, they told you to get your ass back to Dalton. They ain't even let you stay and get none of the state. What the fuck? Listen to me, young man. Don't ruin your life for these people. And I'm telling you this on good authority. But what I do know for a fact, from the neighborhood, you run the ESDA building that's right there next to firehouse number two, where these drugs supposedly are picked up. Now, here is my problem with this scenario. According to our investigation into the neighborhood, you was already the local weed man. I Uh understand. We may not be as lucrative as it once was. But man, do me a favor, back up. You also double as the assistant to Keith Freeman. You're the fall guy. You're the guy that go does the dirty deeds. Y'all tell me if I'm saying something wrong. Do you all on this side got anything to add to this? All right. So outside of all them damn badges that you wear on your shirt, on your belt, on your shoes, I need you to do, and this is exactly what I'm telling you. I don't bluff and I don't lie. You better just quit. Quit, let the dust settle, and let God send you somewhere else. Your file is filling up. And I'm not happy about that because I can see exactly what's happening to you, young man. It ain't worth it. You better hear what I just told you. And you better think about what the level of detail that I'm giving you. Let that shit go. All right. If you have any information mm. that you have concerning this young man, you guys can reach out to me and you all can help further our inquiry into this young man that our investigation has also expanded into. If you give me good de- good details, give me some good tea, we might pay you. 
because people are contributing to this cause and we paying for snitches. <laughs> oh man. Come on in the room. Hey, hey, come on in the room. Does this make me sound good? Jesus is my doctor. Hey, hey, you right. <laughs> this guy's something else. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let me get back to it. This is huh? crazy. Wait, what's that? What is that? Tell me. Oh, okay. You said we said let's go to him. But before I go to him, I got to tell these people who also my investigation has expanded into another person who I wanted to talk to directly is her. What's her name? Oh, it's like a township employee, right? Who's that? What's her name, y'all? Who that? Who that? Her. Look on the screen. She does the code enforcement. She is the one that was charged with she, Kim Austin. Thank you. So that's oh, Kim Austin. This is the one who okay. was charged with prostitution, correct? Okay. I have to remember that. Okay. But that's an old charge, right? So we're not beating her up for that, right? That's an old charge, correct? I'm not a hey, hey, I'm not against second chances, but this is what I heard allegedly. Even though you was arrested for prostitution, girl, get your money how you can get it. I am not a sex worker shame of Martin. I didn't try to do that. I swear to God, I didn't try to do that. Sometimes I do too damn much. I get it. You might have had to be a sex worker. There are activists out here who need that kind of thing available. But this is what I need you to understand for me. Listen to me, Queen. Hear me loud and clear. They talking about you in the supply. <laughs> Wait, what? Whoa. In the supply. In the what? Tap. Now, look, that's a hell of an allegation. But, girl, stay away from firehouse number two after hours. Oh, no. <laughs> That was not right. Okay, I think I need to get out, y'all. I think I lost it. I think I really lost all my composure and sense. This is not supposed to be like this. Should I keep going or do I stop? I need you to understand it. Okay, so I don't know if you have a drug habit. That's just something that we heard as a complete rumor. I apologize if you don't, but I do need you to do me a favor if you are a girl. Get out the supply. Don't, don't, don't. It crack is whack. And sugar, we got boogers without the sugar. We don't, we get, but we get sugar, we got boogers without the booger sugar. Again, these are allegations. I'm not going to confirm it nor deny. Uh, they mad as the fuck. It's going to be a lot of people upset today. But if you have any information that will uh, help us get a better view of this woman's tenure and as an inspector, uh, we have, have heard allegations of businesses being shaken down. Um, and things that have been done that are less than above board. You can reach out to, to me, and if your information is good, I, I'm going to pay you. <laughs> I like snitches. What about this guy? What's his name? He is going scorch earth right now. I do remember, I still remember seeing, he looks familiar, but I'm not sure who, he, who this man is. What's his name? What's this guy's name? Okay, well, we, the, 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 uh, if any of these, huh? Oh, you can't see it. His name is Demarcus Crigley. He is the public works supervisor. He's the public works supervisor. Oh, my team was faster this time. So Demarcus Quigley is the public works supervisor. Y'all, I want to read this because he didn't have this all under his name the last time. He smokes weed all day. Ain't nothing wrong with us smoking a little weed. I ain't going to, you know, I, I believe in the decriminalization of weed. but Not necessarily driving, but he smokes weed all day in an unmarked village SUV with police lights on. Uh, and he is the guy that have been seen. You've been seen, Mr. Quigley. We got video of you taking up political signs of the rivals of your mayor. Oh, that was the guy. 
Okay, so we we did put some. We had a video. We actually, it may have been on this channel as well of um someone's like a ring camera of a guy pulling up in a in a vehicle, picking up signs and throwing them to the side. And the official response was, or at least I think one of the one of the people that were in that I guess conversation in the comments saying they were not political signs. They were other signs. So it was like it wasn't that, but clearly it looks like that's illegal and it was it was campaign signs but the the video that we saw was very far away and we were looking like hopefully someone has a video or ring close so you can see who the person was but this another allegation that is illegal and i know they told you that it was going to go away but mr quigley it's really not because now we have video that proves that you went on property taking up political signs while working for the village of Dalton. Unfortunately, that is not cool. You got an ankle right. monitor. Why do you have an ankle monitor? I want that information. I see an ankle monitor on this screen. I don't have a detailed reason why. You got an ankle monitor from the Cook County Sheriff's Department. Man, one thing I can say that I absolutely love about this administration is they really do believe in second chances. <laughs> um, okay. It seems like so she, we'll talk about that later. Oh, they just she, gave me some. She purposely hires criminals because they were the ones who will do the, the goofy stuff for her without question. New information on the enforcer. She owns property in Dalton. Uh, she has a long background for prostitution. Jesus Christ. That cat on fire. Wow. Oh, we girl, we may have proof that you use synthetic pee to pass your drug test. We know, now I don't want to get you robbed, that you keep a bottle of piss in your bosom. So now that we know this, you probably need Okay, I'm I don't know if I'm gonna finish this tonight. <laughs> I, I, I I don't know if I can finish this tonight, guys. I I I don't know if I can. <laughs> this this is not. I don't know if I can finish this. <laughs> yeah, like maybe we should stop. I. This is out of hand. It it's <laughs> you have to invest. This is too much. You need to put it in your ass crack, and. Wait, 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 wait. What? What? Say what now? Let, hold on a second. Let's say hold on. Oh, we girl, we may have proof that you use synthetic pee to pass your drug test. What's synthetic pee? We know. Pee? Now I don't want to get you robbed. That you keep a bottle of piss in your bosom. So now that we know this, you probably need to put it in your ass crack. Who would rob her for the what it all right and we know that there's a thousand dollars oh you got into an accident in one of the village cars now them them cars gotta go back to the bank them cars being repossessed don't be up there destroying them banks cars but allegedly she has gotten into an accident and she passed the P test because she had that piss. And we're now trying to figure out, y'all don't think that this stuff is possible. Y'all better believe it. God ain't playing. Y'all better believe it. We're going to sit up there and say, we're going to try to figure out how you passed that test because we got potential proof that that P was in your bra. Wow. Everybody waiting on Kamal. Everybody keeps saying, Jerry, release Kamal. Jerry, release Kamal. Why y'all want his details? That was so bad. Jesus Christ, give me a second. Okay. Can I get, can I get, wait, what is that? Oh, Carmen Khalees, one of Freeman's mistresses. Again, you guys, we're going to be releasing files on all of these individuals one by one. Tonight is a special live. And this live is for all of them to let them know, y'all better stop fucking with me. 
Y'all better stop trying to find false information, putting it together. Y'all better stop trying. Y'all better stop going along with this administration because I'm just a citizen. And if I can find this out, what do you think that the government can find out? Yeah. What do you think that we're giving the government? If this is only a third of the information that I'm giving to on Facebook Live for conversation and consideration, even though they ain't trying to support the work because y'all still ain't gave enough money for us to get this information we're trying to get, what else do you think that we have? Anyway, Carl, Carmen, Carlise, if you worked at a restaurant, I know someone said that this is pointless um, gossip. Most the things that he has said, apart from the some of the outrageous stuff about the drug stuff, which I'm not familiar with, the stuff about um, Keith Freeman is is proven. You can look it up. Um, even just the code enforcer about prostitution, that's that's all 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 true. Um, a lot of what he has said is true. You may not like his approach <laughs> or his style. I mean, sure, it makes it entertaining to watch this, right? If instead of just reading it like the, the financial director of the township, I uh, forgot his name, that just bores you to sleep when he speaks, when he talks those numbers. But I have not seen anything that is a blatant lie from Jediah Brown. The people who brought him in are the people who trust me. So it's, it's important to kind of point it out. The people who, who brought Jediah in, the people who trust him to do what he's doing, trusted me. And providing information and and in context to a lot of what's going on, so I just want to put this out there. Jedi has not lied yet, at least as for my concern. The things he's already mentioned, even the stuff he says, is outrageous. But the man has not lied yet. You may not like his approach. You may not like the fact he curses a lot or whatever. But um, gossip, no. These people are working for the um, public, working for us. They can't. They can't behave this way. We can't have public officials on drugs. We can't have people taking cars and wash them. This cannot continue. So they brought this guy for Andrew Holmes. But obviously, it's blown up to the extent to everyone is dirty. Well, not everyone. But a lot of people are dirty in this administration that Henier is pushing. Thornton Township trustee, mayor's assistant, Keith Freeman's sad boutte. She is the one that was in, she's enjoying a part of the kingdom of Keith Freeman's wife. Uh, and she also sits on the board, doesn't she? So for the uh, the Tiffany Henyard Cancer Foundation, correct? Yeah. She is, she is fallopian too, too deep in this corrupt administration. And so she is fair game. Also, why did she, hold on. They were asking, oh, we got proof of you, Carmen, allegedly, going around to the business owners looking for $5,000 contributions what? to the re-election campaign of the mayor. Oh, no. Five, damn. That sounds like extortion. Five thousand dollars, ain't it? Wasn't it only eight thousand people who voted out of twenty thousand? Ain't that correct? Somebody help me. What? And five thousand dollars of business? Shit, that's a lot of money. They could have knocked on them doors in four days. This dude yes. was on the news. Who was that? Yeah, so asking for five hundred thousand, five thousand dollars allegedly, we got that information and we're going to turn that over. But the thing that's crazy is that Fairway Foods and Dalton was threatened with fines and a revoking of their business license if they didn't. You know about this, Carlise, from what we understand. If they didn't donate, one thing you shouldn't do. Better ask Alderman Ed Burke in Chicago is piss off these business owners because when they're not afraid, they ain't not afraid. So, wow. who is Devonte Stewart? Yeah, we've already dealt with it. I know that's his name, Devonte Stewart. I know who that is. Let's skip that. Yeah, I mean she's that, following that the in his book. file. I see it. I see it. I see it. Who is Terry Young? Did we talk about him? Did we talk about Terry Young, y'all? Mm 
the hardest working man in policing history, right? Right? Oh shit, 303 overtime hours. Now y'all, this has nothing to do, this ain't got nothing to do with brand, but I just thought this was a damn good picture. Look at these two beautiful black men, all skin folk and kin folk. Mm -hmm. All skin folk and kin folk. Oh, wait a minute. Look at the, I just realized where they at. Look at the background. Isn't that Springfield? Oh. Boy, I'll tell you one thing about this administration. There got to be two places that they wish they hadn't gone. To Springfield and to Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry on, let's talk about it. He was a good friend with Devontae Stewart. He did not score high on a police exam. He was promoted to sergeant. And he was All they do is promote people who, can't, who don't have a, a business doing this. $13,000 paycheck for a two-week period. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. They said that that's the officer that was dancing in that video. I'd be dancing like a motherfucker too if I just got paid for some hours that I couldn't possibly do as a human. <laughs> this is so... This it's is one of the hard. reasons why we believe that Collins was fired. Yeah, this is deep. This is deep. And I think they thought oh, they could get away with this. Godly. Because they see that from the top that she's not getting held accountable. It's just like, this, let them put, do what they're put doing. This background report, put this background report into Lacey's file, please. Do not give me that right now. But I think that for tonight, I've given you guys enough tea yeah. that I do a good job. Are you good? Are we satisfied, all teams? Is there anything else that y'all make? We are not talking about Kamal Woods right now. I'm uh, still, huh? I mean, on, the only reason why I'm pausing it is because we're still fact-checking some of the data. But Kamal Wood going to have to be a whole special in himself. And the one thing I can say, and no, it didn't sway me, but at least he had the balls to stand face-to-face -face with me like a man. Kamal didn't piss me off yet. I'm waiting on it. But I, when I give his foul, I just want to make sure that I got all my uh, uh, T's crossed and my, dot, my I's dotted. Um, the one thing that I will say, huh? Uh -huh. right, see if he's if he's about to finish, then we'll 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 uh pack it up and do some final thoughts here. I'm not sure. Not. Did I talk about that concert already? I did it. Okay. So this is what I'm gonna say about Kamal Woods. Okay, there we go. To you, Tiffany. And I just gotta say this based on my information. These hoes ain't loyal. These hoes ain't loyal. Wait, how that song go? How that song go? Are they really going to tell them how the song goes? <laughs> Is that, that's it. These hoes ain't loyal. It's a song. Can somebody please give me the... Uh, uh, can I get a? Can I get an audio of that, please? Somebody. This is by far the most entertaining I mean, news report I ever tell. heard. This one to tell her. <laughs> Kamal Woods is a charming man. I've had the pleasure of speaking to him. But i tell you this for a fact. that some of the Kamal Woods report, and this is my own personal opinion, Lord... Give me wisdom in saying this because it's kind of it's kind of told a, a, a thin line. I'm going to give you all the facts. I've already given you all some of them. We're working on Kamal Woods report. It's literally the biggest report that I had. And that's why I have to take my time with it. But Kamal Woods was on his way the fuck out the door. Kamal Woods was on his way the fuck out the door. Huh? <laughs> can I get that? Can somebody send me that to to, to play it somewhere? Maybe maybe on the uh, I don't know. I need that somewhere. But anyway, Kamal Woods was on his way out the door. I think I told you guys this on the last video or video before. But the no. the Nino Brown outfit, the infamous Nino Brown outfit, was Kamal's idea. Kamal. Dummy. Oh wait a minute! I didn't talk about. I didn't talk about Keith Freeman's printing company. Okay, we're, we're a little familiar Keith with Freeman's that Keith Freeman's well. printing company. Let me tell y'all about how slick these people think they are. Um, the individual investor talked about that, I believe. I think he did talk about the printing company and how he used it. They 
double dipping, triple dipping, quadruple dipping? Why does Keith Freeman have a printing company that's being paid to print things for the for the for the village of Dog? Or is it the township? Which one is it? It's it's both. Do we know the name? Do we know the name? Yes. His wife owns the printing company, but what is the name of the printing company? Kamal Woods' friend was the contractor that worked on the fire department, firehouse number two. I'm telling y'all enough shit without telling y'all nothing yet. Kamal has a friend. What was that friend's name? Somebody help me out. I know. I remember that conversation. I remember that testimony. I don't have it in front of me, so I don't remember the names. Okay. Well, while they're working on that, uh, we're trying to get the, the printing company that uh, that uh, Keith Freeman runs, and we're trying to get the name of the construction company that got the bid to do or work on the firehouse, firehouse number two. But while we're doing that, I want to tell y'all a couple more things that I think is pretty interesting. And again, I'm also not doing Tiffany yet because her file is fat as fuck. Can y'all believe that Kamal's file is fatter than, than, than Tiffany's file? That's crazy. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, I told you all about jail cell number three. Remember, if you ever go to jail in Dalton, you want to fight like hell not to be put in jail cell number three. That's where they're going to try to put me. Why is jail cell number three the wrong cell to go to? Number one, we've got a little bit more understanding. There is a pipe that runs through jail cell number three that's good for a lynching. Uh -huh. And there's a video camera there yeah. that doesn't work that well. Go figure. Did y'all hear what I just said? That's crazy I've those about are this. some of the reasons why jail cell number three is not a good jail cell we do have a video that is of lieutenant staples and now i'm saying it allegedly allegedly there's a video that is allegedly lieutenant staples fucking inside of the dalton police department jail I'm assuming she fucked in jail cell number three. <laughs> uh, one of the things that we found to be interesting and we're trying to deal with access control information and cameras and things like that, we cannot get that information because the video cameras, access control, all of that is ran by the mayor's office. So we haven't been able to get that just yet, but we have already been working on some things because guess what? You just cannot get away. But I need y'all to listen to what I'm saying to you right now. The firehouse is a little bit difficult because they all have the same door code. So you can't tell exactly who's going in the door. Hey, is that the same thing for the police department? Do we know that? This is just insane. Is there is there access control for the police department? Is there an ID card or is everybody using the same code for that? Do we know that? Antiquated as fuck. So somebody buzzes them in. Right? Okay. So there is no access control. So it's kind of going to be a little bit harder to talk about who specifically are going in these buildings at certain times if we didn't have information. Remember this, if I'm telling y'all, we got more information and we got proof that we're turning over of these allegations because ain't nobody suing me for no defamation and I not be able to defend myself. But this is the tip, not the full iceberg. And so what I want you all to understand, there is no access control information as it relates to who goes in there, but that doesn't mean we don't know what we're talking about and we don't have proof of what we're saying. But when one of these individuals died, we understood that the clerks were the ones tasked supposedly with checking on these inmates. But one of these workers died, there was a certain lieutenant that, was, that got up and came in the middle of the night. And instead of it just being a supervisor thing, it was them coming to make sure that the documents show that they were checking on a person every single hour, which we believe and allege that they were not. Wow. Now, a couple of other things that I want to talk to you all about in this particular video, and then we're going to conclude it for the night. We're going to have questions, comments. We're going to have a little party. I don't know, but we're going to be concluding this real soon, and we'll be coming back with another batch of tea as it is brewing right now in the background. I'm going to talk to you all about this youth grant. Okay.
Let's, uh, I got an, oh, wow. Appreciate you, investigating unit. Yo, email me. So you had a, you had some information, if, if you do, about a lot, a lot that's going on. But appreciate the five memberships. Much, much love. Thank you very, very much. Um, and I'll say you guys this at the conclusion, I, I try, this is a new thing I'm trying to do a live redirect. So when this live ends, you guys should be able to go to the late night crew. He started a couple of, uh, probably started about 20 minutes ago. So we're just finishing this up. I'll put a link in as well. If you can, um, so you guys can click and go over there. They're going to be talking more about this situation, but we're going to finish this real quick. But yeah, hopefully this does work. I, I I just put it in his post. I put his uh his uh YouTube channel on there. So half the when this is over, oh oh awesome oh awesome that's great. Um, I hope I could uh, have a um have uh, Jedi come through, but it it's a lot. I don't know how he do he does it, but it's so much. And like I said earlier, uh, the man has not said anything that is incorrect in terms of uh of some of these characters and what they have done. There is no, like, he's just saying this, he's pulling it out. Maybe the, the opinions or whatever, but it's pretty legit so far. And I think his, what he did at that township meeting, I mean, again, he ethered everybody. It was, it was, it was great to see that there's people standing up now towards and not just him and us and content creators, but the residents in general. And so y'all, some, like, this is one of the things that happens in the administration was related to dog. So they, they had a youth grant that was given to them, a youth, youth violence prevention grant, where they had to take 16 to 24 year olds and put them in different municipalities to work. There was a program that was created and outlined by the chief of the fire chief. The fire chief set up a program for them to become EMTs and uh, what else? I can't remember. EMTs mainly, they had a total. Oh, yeah. So, um, and we have a con we have conversations with Jedi, but I will love to bring him on the the the, the channel. Love to bring him on the channel, see that we can talk. I know he has a lot more information. Um, I'm just interested in a lot, but a little bit obviously about him, his history, and exactly. I, it's it's it's. I am speechless on the amount of information that he already has been brought in uh, to present. And what is, I, at this point, I don't know what is going on. Um, he's, he's all in, obviously. He's, he knows exactly what he's doing. But damn. I mean, he, the urine in the bra. It was like, okay, I'm going to have to take a break from watching this. <laughs> but we can't. We, we have to get... Oh, we gotta it's 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 really in, in infested with corruption and incompetence. This all needs to be uh exposed. It has to. Even the stuff that you may I think a lot of people are thinking uh, people who are having relationships, affairs. But the problem is the people who are putting these affairs, they're integrate they're integrating into governing, into helping, it's supposed to be helping the people. This all this nonsense is not helping anybody. Of, uh... I can't remember. Yeah. 17 kids. This grant was for a total of how much? 200,000, right? $200,000 grant. They ran this program. There's literally a graduation that happens with this program. She touts this program as a victory. But the fire chief went to the mayor to say, look, where is the money? Six hundred thousand dollar grant. What? Wait a minute, are you serious? Okay, my team got two hundred thousand dollars. This team said six hundred thousand dollars. Just know it was some hundred thousands of dollars. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so the fire chief goes and says, "Hey, mayor, where's the money for the program? We got, we're doing the program." And the mayor says, "There's no money." Correct? So Who paid for these programs? For how many kids, they said? The fire beret paid for this program. What happened to that grant money? 
She threw a whole concert and had a mental health professional stand in the crowd so that they could say that they had mental health services at a concert. They overcharged the village, the grant, the township or whatever, with G Herbo concert. They said that they, I thought it was when my team found $100,000, but I'm understanding it's been how much money spent on this concert, allegedly? She loves spending a lot of money on concerts. Spends lots of money on the DJs, the whole thing. That's... They spent $200,000 for this concert. G Herbo got what? $30,000 for eight minutes. Damn, I should have been a rapper. Should have been over. Anybody know? The U Grant. So they they build they built they build the U Grant gave him less than what they said they gave him. G Herbo, they owe you some money. Hey G Herbo, Dalton played you. They took your bag, buddy. And they've done this consistently with other things. But the crazy part about this is they've thrown these concerts, didn't even charge nobody for these concerts, and brought no revenue back into Dalton while we got Andrew Holmes on stage pop locking and dropping and then on top of that i'm trying to figure out why the hell is there a skating rink that's been built named after her daughter yeah. and y'all ain't even got no revenue from it because the damn thing is barely open that is interesting you've heard that conversation before the other thing that i want to talk about in tonight's con talk conversation again y'all please i know i said that i was going to do the the thing about Kamal Woods, it is literally going to be one of my favorite pieces. I have to make sure that we are 40 times over checking that information. But this should be information that's good enough for you all to carry on. But listen, the other thing was what? It was one thing I forgot. Does anybody remember the one thing that I didn't that, uh, that I didn't say that I talked about today that I want to share? This got to stop. Funding the program, <laughs> this, got, the concert. this, this person has to get out of the power. Connected into one, correct? Yeah, this is this is just too much. All right, the rest of this stuff, I'm not gonna inundate y'all with too much information. I've literally given y'all over an hour worth of tea, a little hour worth of tea, and this is not the deep, the deepest that it gets. I tell you, there's so much tea. I'm, I'm not even. I can't. Even, I'm not even tired. I'm wide awake. There's too much tea, but it's necessary to put to to have this out here. Um, I just see the investigating unit. Appreciate you. Another five um, a super uh, memberships. Much love. $20. Super chat again. Very, very. I just appreciate all of the, of the support. Um, this goes deeper than Tiffany Hanyard. I mean, we talked about, you know, just some theories about why higher powers have not done anything. She has able to do whatever she wanted so far in this, in this, Township in this in this in, in Dalton, and it's so disgusting. She don't care about kids. She don't care about cancer patients with the with the with the um, foundation, and she just put the worst people in in power or authority, and they do whatever they want because they all have crazy criminal records. Worse than it's it's beyond just to to contemplate, just to think about. Yeah, this is too much. And it don't seem like it's going to stop. And it's important that we can't stop. Um, everyone has been putting out as much information as possible. All the content creators, obviously, Jared I, um, the last 48 hours have been mind-blowing of him pushing as hard as he can at these people. And I think he wants them to wake up a little bit. First of all, it's too late for many of them. Like, even though you could try to clean this up, it's too late. I think Keith Freeman knows exactly what's going on. I think even Hanyard knows that he said it earlier she's slamming things she's cursing she knows she's losing it and the the the, the vi you know the people they're not victims but the people who worked and followed their lead instead of doing what sandra tracy said telling she told them early on i don't do illegal she said it i don't do illegal she was true to herself and it got her fired and it got her to lose money to a point where she was so overwhelmed she had a heart attack but she is suing tiffany Hayard. But she said, I, I'm true to myself. I'm not doing any of this. And Hanier was like, well, I can't have you here. I only want people to do, do illegal. If I want them to, control, no dissent. And that's where she is. And that's where we are.
So I appreciate you guys. I know this is a pretty long live. Thank you. You guys stayed. Most of you guys stayed throughout the entire thing. I'm going to put the link of Shay's uh, live right here. Hopefully, you guys can join it. Hopefully, it, this thing does work. That'd be kind of cool if it does work. Um, wait a minute. Where am I? Oh, this chat's flying by. Hold on a second. I, ho hopefully, it'll slow down. Wait. 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 Okay, I can't. This thing is it's, it's flying by quickly. Um, okay, now, okay, now it is. Okay. So, let me put... I'm gonna put his yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pin that in case it doesn't work. Um, I would love as much as you can. Many of you can, can go to his live, show him some love, show him some some. Uh, you know, I'm sure he's gonna be way funnier than I am. I mean, the amount of stuff. Uh, if he and if he goes in and um, uh, reacts to Jedi's live, is he? I'm sure his mind is blown. But I'm sure he knows a lot because he was actually there. But thank you guys for coming through. Appreciate all of the support. It means the world to me. Um, hopefully, I'll be back soon, sooner than you think, uh, with some interviews and you know breaking down so even more more stuff for you guys. So thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your night. Hang out with Shay before you go to bed, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.